Yo, guys, what's up? Who do we have here? Who's in the Who's in the chat tonight? As you can see, um, like I said yesterday, I'm going to open up this uh, 1998 uh, box of Omega. Yeah. <clears throat> but I want to wait a little bit and see if we get some more uh, viewers. In the meantime, we can just chit chat about something. I, I really don't know how to set it up, like to like schedule. You know, like like sometimes um, uh, John Jabs does. Hey, Donella Camp, how's it going? Uh, things are good here. I uh, can't complain too much. Um, where you uh, where you're located, Darnell? Like what state? Are you an East Coaster, West Coaster? Oh, South Carolina. I was just down there the, uh, in June. Yeah, June, June or July. Anyway, I was just down there in, uh, on a little vacation visiting my niece. So, um, didn't, uh, didn't go near Clover though. Um, was actually, uh, closer to like the Orangeburg area. Um, Norway exactly is where we were in Norway. Um, that's where she lived. So, um, but yeah, uh, where I'm located right now in New Jersey is where I'm located. All right. Well, it doesn't look like we're gaining anyone. Uh, we've actually lost uh, two. <clears throat> so um, oh, we got one back. So okay. So you're like right inside the border. Yeah. Um, yeah. I went down there. I was uh, you know a little vacation, but I wanted to also. Um, you know, see more of the uh, of the uh, the state. A couple of years back, we were looking to move down there, but um, my wife hesitated a little bit, and uh, then my son gave his grandchildren. So now we're 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 here. We're we're staying in New Jersey. We're not going to move. Uh, you know, kind of unfortunately, um, but it is what it is. So. Um, yeah, well, we lost another one, so uh, let's just we'll just get to opening packs. I don't know, um, maybe someone's having connectivity issues. I'm not sure, but let's get to let's get to ripping some of these. So this is a, a box of Omega that I picked up at the flea market um, during the summer a couple months ago. Um, you know, I just. Uh, the guy had it there on his table. And I think he wanted like 12 bucks for it or something like that. So I bought it. So I've got these really spiffy scissors here that, well, can't hurt yourself with them. But you can't cut anything either with it. So what are you going to do? But anyway, I'm going to open them up. You know, I didn't even take the time to look to see who was in here in this set. But um, what the hey? Hey, let's even set it up like we're displaying them at the store or at our card shop. How's that? There we go. So as you can see, Tony Gwynn is on the cover. I have to get my glasses, though. That's one of the problems, I guess, with age is, uh, <clears throat> is unfortunately... Your eyesight starts to go a little bit on you. So it says Premier Issue. So this is the numero uno um, set put out by Omega. And I 
I don't know if they're part of Pacific or not. They may be a standalone company called Omega. And let's see uh, real quick. Let me see what uh, what our cards are that we can get. Whoops. I don't know we get this camera thing right. I don't know if it's ever. There we go. So the we can get um, insert ratios, special red parallel, one in one. Okay, so you get a red parallel in every pack. Good to know. And online is uh, four in 137. So you get, I guess, uh, eight cards per pack. Um, let's see how many packs are in here. I'm going to assume 30 some packs. A prism is one in 37. So probably just one and over a box. And EO portraits, one in 73. And face to face is one in 145. So there's the odds of whatever winning something. And I think I said, saw, saw something. There was a, there was a mail in offer too. On the box, they had some stuff, online inserts, whatever. Not going to happen. It's uh, a little late for that. Even the two-year window of some card manufacturers might give you has long since been expired. So I guess we're just going to look for whatever. Oh, look, right there's the red one right off the bat. And it's Rick Aguilar. We don't know who. I mean, I mean, I know who he is, but it's a, he's a nobody, right? Not a Hall of Famer. Craig Jeffries, no. Wally Joyner, he was a good ball player. Uh, Shana Stewart, no. Nah. Brian Rose, yeah, no. Rob Nan, Kerry Woods, yeah, he had a 20 strikeout game. And Robbie Alomar. So we got one Hall of Famer. And we're just going to keep on going, keep on keeping on. I'll be, uh, yeah, Brady Anderson. Kenny Lofton, you know, okay, career, I guess. Levon Hernandez. Bobby Bonilla. Andy Pettit. I'm a Yankee guy, so we're going to put the Yankees out to the side. F.P. Santangelo. Roger Clemens. There you go. Maybe a Hall of Famer one day. And Juan Gonzalez. All right, that's two packs down. ABC, what's going on? How's it going? Mattingly, yeah, maybe, maybe we get a, I don't know, I don't think it's in this, uh, in this set, but you never know. Exactly, we want some Yankees. Who's a, oh, there's a Yankee, David Cohn and the Red Parallel. There's two Yankee cards. And then we get Scott Rowland, which is like the online card, I guess. Okay, well. You know, just put him over there, I guess. Al Martin. Devon White. Jeremy Gonzalez. Never heard of him. Chuck Finley. Okay. Brett Boone. And Jim Edmonds. So, keep it going here. By the way, thanks for tuning in, guys. Um you haven't subbed each other up why don't you go ahead and do that uh, take the time and sub to each other like to promote uh, as many of, of the other channels as we can to help everyone grow hashtag i guess the we grow together thing john halalama okay justin thompson terry steinbach john allrood yeah Oh, there's Junior. There we go. We got a Junior card. Ken Griffey Jr. Nice. Nice, nice. Hall of Famer. So we've got Junior. We got Eckersley's a Hall of Famer. We've got um, Brady Anderson's just a red card. Alomar's a Hall of Famer. So let's do this. Let's go Hall of Famers. Non-Hall of, Hall of Famers. Um... No, it's a red card. That's all. She's really good players and Hall of Famer Eckersley. Okay, there we go. And we have Brad Radke. And I'm gonna keep calling out everybody's name. That's gonna take forever. Bobby Jones. There's a Juan Gonzalez. It's a EO. Um. 
So that's an insert card. I mean, it looks like Pacific. So I'm thinking this is a Pacific product, even though it says Omega, because Pacific has that. Anyway, oh, yeah, there it is. There's their crown. Never mind. I had a hunch it was a Pacific product. It just Derek Jeter. Sorry, I interrupted myself, but there's Derek Jeter. All right, we're doing good with Yankees. Hey, Darnell, thanks for subbing up ABC. Uh, he's trying to grow his channel for sure. So that, gee, Jeter goes with the Yankees or Hall of Famers? Mm, Hall of Famers. That's Honolama Lama again. And Will Clark, good player, but not a Hall of Famer. No. Jeter's not in the Hall of Fame either, so I guess we, we got to put him back with the Yankees because he's not a Hall of Famer yet. Mike Cameron. Just a parallel. Strawberry, Yankee. Not the best Yankee in the world, but. There's Ramon Martinez. And there's a Hall of Famer, Jim Tomei. Nice. Nice card. Hall of Famer. Uh, nope. Another Jeffries. That's the second Jeffries. There's a Will Clark. I think we had one before. If not, we do now. Hey, Deki Arabu. That's a bust. Yankee bust. Spent a lot of money for him. And he was a bust. Jason Diambi. Matt Williams. Glenn Allen Hill. Terry Millwood. Barry Larkin, Hall of Famer. Boom. BJ Serral. Okay, moving right along. Sandy Alomar, Jr. Here's a Tomei. Hall of Famer. Uh, another Kerry Woods, 20 strikeouts on May 6th, 1998. Kerry Woods. Another straw man. Another Al Martin. Carlos Delgado and Reggie Jefferson. Yeah, Jeters. We got a, we got a Yankee on the back of this one. A knob block. Former Yankee, I say. There's Buner. Ah, there's a Hall of Famer. Schmoltzy. Nice. John Schmoltz. AJ Hinch, he's a manager now for. Ah, what teams he managed now? Houston? Kevin Ori was a bust. Daryl Kyle, rest in peace, Daryl. I met him when he was a minor leaguer, got his autograph in person. Luis Gonzalez, Josh Booty, and there's Chuck Mountblatt. Hmm, this one's got the imprint of the card on the back, like it didn't get the um, glossy on the back. Interesting. All right, let's go to the front. Never heard of that guy. Ah, oh, look at that, Junior. Nice. So, there's the back of these cards. Dip, 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 dot mariners dot org. There you go. Very nice. Very nice. Hall of Famer Griffey. Brett Boone again. Alex Gonzalez, Glenn Allen Hill again, and Brian Anderson. So, next pack. By the way, thank you guys for tuning in and uh, uh, watching. I appreciate it. There's a Hall of Famer, Chipper. Hold it right for the camera. Oop, this way. Nice card. Red Parallel. Chipper Jones, card number 20, Hall of Famer. And then we've got Henry Rodriguez. I met him in a minor leaguer. Paul O'Neill, Yankee. Reggie Sanders. 
Great Council, Nagy, Derek Bell, and Ricky Henderson, Hall of Famer. Henderson, nice. Nice. So we're getting our share of Hall of Famers out of this anyway. Who's this? Tony Gwynn. He's the man to cover of the box. Right there he is. Except this is the red parallel to well, let's put the box back in here. It's the red parallel. Nice. Justin Thompson. Nope. Kevin Stalker, not in a Phillies uniform. Hinch again. There's Tom Glavin. Followed up by Dave Justice. Hall of Famer Glavin. All right, so we have about eight packs left. Eight packs left. And that's it. Small box. Eight cards per pack. And only 250 cards per set. Base cards, I guess, not counting any parallels. Vladdy Sr., or the, some people call him Vladdy Daddy. Vladimir Guerrero Sr. Two year totals. That's it. So he's only got Hall of Famer. It's his second year, I guess. Ryan Jackson, what's this say? One year total. So then maybe Josh Booty again. There's a maybe possibly a future Hall of Famer in Larry Walker. Nine year total. So yeah, that was Vladdy Daddy's um second year card. Ryan Klesko, maybe third year. He's had two years totals. Klesko. Paul O'Neill again. Cal Ripken Jr. followed up by Tony Clark. So we got another Hall of Famer and Ripken Jr. All right, Hideo Nomo, not on for Carlos Bayerga. Mm -hmm. Hold on, getting notifications. Yeah, I forgot how to turn them off. Hey, Phil, how's it going? All right, so who do we have here? Derek Bell again, Tomko. Lance Johnson, Tim Salmon, and Johnny Damon. Not of the Yankee fame, not of the Red Sox fame, but of the Royals fame. Oh, there's Bagwell. And the Red Parallel. Nice. Another Hall of Famer. Salmon. Henry Rodriguez. Danny Nagel, Jeff King. There's two former Buckos right there, back to back. Mark McGuire, Big Mac, not a Hall of Famer. Followed by Brad Fulmer. Never heard. No, didn't do anything. Alrighty, got a few packs left, and that'll be it for this box. Todd Helton, possible future Hall of Famer, right there. But not in the Hall of Fame yet. Shane Andrews. Nope. There's our second Smoltz. George Fabregas. Eduardo Perez. He's an announcer now, isn't he? Or a commentator. Scott Rowland. Good ball player, but not a Hall of Famer. And Paul Canerco. Four packs left. Alex Rodriguez, Red Parallel. Nice. Not a Hall of Famer. Here's a Juan Gonzalez. Oh, here you go. Here's a special insert. We haven't seen any of these yet. No, 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 no. The Prism. So that's the Prism. The Prisms came. You don't have to read the pack. Prisms were one in how many packs was it? Prisms are only 1 in 37. Actually, the EO portraits were 1 in 73. And a face-to-face -face is 1 in 145. So, 
you get one per box basically and we got one gonzalez the other one was so the eos the other one was uh one gonzalez as well so we got two one gonzalez okay of the special chase cards i guess you want to call them tino martinez a yankee brett tomko david wells in a yankee uniform perfect game may 17th 1998 fred mcgriff the crime dog not a hall of famer but a good ball player Derek lowe and Vinny Castillo and Miguel Cairo. Two packs left. Come on, get out of there. And we have Frank Thomas, the Big Hurt, in the Red Parallel. Hall of Famer. Followed up by Larry Walker. None more. Eduardo Perez again. Gary Sheffield, good ball player, not in the Hall of Fame. Jamie Moyer. Mike Messina, Moose, he's in the Hall of Fame. Sammy Sosa, not in the Hall of Fame. Andres Galarraga, the big cat. All right, we got one pack left. So let's. I got to turn off these warnings when they pop up. I should be in the Hall of Fame, uh, Crime Dog. It's a crime that he's not in the Hall of Fame. How's that? Or it should be a crime. All right. Oh, did I open something and not go through it? I guess I did. Here's Pat Mears. Charles Johnson. Apparently, I just set it down. Craig Biggio. Hall of Famer. Hey, Durham. Derek Lee and Joey Cora. Of the many cores that played in Major League Baseball. All right, we'll finish out this last pack here. Move on. Uh, Kevin Stalker. Mike Lansing. Mike Piazza, Hall of Famer. Kenny Rogers. Dave Nielsen. Now, he's one of, like, the few Australian-born uh, guys that played in the Major Leagues. Like, at the time, he was the only one. Andrew Jones, not a Hall of Famer. And the last one is Jose Canseco for you Canseco fans. There it is. Uh, Jose Canseco. All right. So, guys, gals, uh, that's it for the box break. Um. I don't know uh, who else is who's doing what tonight i don't even i don't even have a schedule i kind of just said last night that i you know i guess i'll open this box here um i should probably put anyway here's the hits bang 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 um i think that's it those three were the uh, chase cards and then of course we got all these hall of famers with um okay we got the griffey sorry we missed the griffey got to put that there um and of course we got the Griffey red parallel, but it's just a parallel. It's not one. Of, it's not a chase card or special insert. So I think that's about it. And of course we got our Yankees. We do have the um, Derek Jeter somewhere in this mess. It's not a red card. It was a base card. We've got two strawberries and two O'Neills. Why couldn't we get two Jeters instead? There's the Jeter. Lots of Hall of Famers. Lots of good ball players that are not in the Hall of Fame that maybe should be. But I don't think there's anything else. There's, I think we covered all the uh, chase cards. Yeah, that's it. But there we go, guys. So if you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, comment. Don't forget to tell all your friends. Um, hashtag we grow together. Don't forget to sub sub to each other. Everyone in the chat here. All you gotta do is click on their name uh, to the uh, the right of their name, and um, it'll take you to their their YouTube page, and you can 
this page will still stay here and you'll be able to sub them up. Hey Tex, how's it going? E.L. Brown? Yeah, um, no Mattingly in this set, I don't think. This is a 98. I don't think he was still playing. I don't know. As much as I'm a Yankee, I say I'm a Yankee guy. I don't know everything. I, I wasn't collecting cards in 1998. So um, I do have some of these that I've picked up in lot sets, you know, or whatever, when I buy bulk stuff. But uh, this is like the first box that I uh, ever even saw. So I have seen the cards before, but just, you know, never had the opportunity to buy them fresh right off this store shelf or whatnot. But still, nice card. Every card has some kind of foil on it, which is nice. Um, Hey, yet, yet, pineapple, skeet, what's going on? Oh, I'm sorry, we're getting a lot of glare on uh, on the, the Griffey. It's a nice, sweet card if it focuses. And my hand stays still. Damn hand. Damn camera. Damn, everything's backwards for me here. Not for you guys. Come on. But anyway, it takes practice. I got to practice at this setup. This, is, I mean, this is a nice prism. You get one per box. And it looks like little little starbursts in the background. Little, And it just happens to be the other chase card. This EO happened to be a uh, Gonzalez as well. And then we got this other. There was two of these in the box. Scott Rowland was the other one. And there's our boy Jeter. So that's all I got, guys. Unless you have any questions, you want to talk about anything, whatever. You want to see anything. Uh, I, we, I kind of went through this yesterday. A lot of my stuff is, is buried um, under this mountain of, of cards here. Hey, sports card junkie, how's it going? Um, you kind of just missed it. We just got done opening this. Uh, this up but here's what we got the chase cards and we got a jeter and of course some other yankees the red parallels you can see there are red parallels to the base um and this the light is really this is what the box looks like i came in a box i picked that box up at a flea market um it was like i don't know 12 bucks or whatever i forget what the guy charged me for it so um I don't know. So this time, this time tomorrow, I put it, I let it up to you guys. There's only five of you here um, <clears throat> for something to do tomorrow live. Maybe We're, I don't know when I'm going to be able to do it because the jabs boys will be on. Um, I do want to tune in for uh, John, John's uh, FMF Friday because I sent him a package. And I can't wait for him to open it up. It's, I think it's going to be a little bit on the funny side. First time I had to look at this, somebody, I mean, like, literally look up on six foot two. Yeah, um, I, I still have I still have some of those left. We're still chasing uh, mantle, even though I, I've already I have one in my collection. It's still I still have how many of these? So there's five. I'm, trying, I'm doing the blocks of five, five packs. So there's two. So I got like three more, three more chances to get a mantle, pull a mantle out of the uh, the ninety one score series two. But how about tomorrow we'll take a vote on um, maybe I'll open up one of these boxes. The problem is they take a while to go through. 
and I'm on the East Coast, and I have some some people on the West Coast that like watching, and then we still got the Jabs boys that are going to be doing their their thing. Um, but if if you want one, so they're both the same. They're they're ninety from the eighty six. 86 Dunross, and the other is the Canadian version. It's the, it, this one is a leaf. This is a baseball card exchange sealed box. And the story behind this is I wanted to do a side by side, say, um, baseball card exchange versus a non baseball card exchange box. I wasn't paying full attention. I bought two of these off of eBay. And I wasn't paying attention. It was cheaper to buy two than to buy just one um, in the long run. You get like one and a half, one and a half price, something like that. Uh, but they're, um, this one, they didn't come sealed. This is like baseball card exchange sealed. So the problem is, you know, is uh, have they been searched? And I wanted to do a side by side. And now it looks like I'm not going to be able to because they're actually printed at different locations, you know, Probably different sheets. I don't even know if they had the same uh, amount of cards in the base set. Sometimes the Canadian sets are smaller. Um, so I don't know. Maybe I'll just open up this one here because I have two of those. I don't know. And I don't know. I'll see if I can pick up another one of these from Baseball Card Exchange. I still do my little experiment. Um, I got... Another one. I can open up that, I guess. What else do I have? I can open up. I'm looking and I'm not seeing. Oh, because it's right here in front of me. So these are. Ouch. What are these, Flair? Series two from what year? Ninety. Well, why doesn't it say what year it is on the front? On the box. Ninety-two Fleer. So ninety-two Fleer, and this is a ninety-five Fleer. It says clearly right there on the box. So I can open up one of these boxes um, tomorrow. Um, so there's, now there's three people in the, uh, in the channel. So, um, so the three of you, the three of you get to vote and let's see, ready? So this will be one, two, and three. Which one do you want me to open up and, and go through tomorrow? One, two, or three. There's no 80, there's no 82 Fleer. It's 92, 95, or the 86 uh, Leaf. So you got the basic Dunruss, Fleer, and Fleer, 92 and 95. So 92, 92. Okay, I'm sorry, Donnell. Yeah, you did correct yourself. I'm sorry. So I have one for one, one for two. Who's going to be my tiebreaker? Actually, there's four people here now to vote. Don't so, don't pick three because then we'll have a three-way tie and I have to open up all three. No, not going to happen that way, guys. I'm already thinking ahead of you. All right. Well, the problem with this is they may be bricked up don't know and these could be bricked up too i got this from an auction auction i, I bought a couple like eight lots of stuff from an auction this came off of ebay and this came um i don't know where i got this that's either the auction or flea market one of the two all right so we're going to do this one All right, so we'll do this one tomorrow. Uh, see, I don't know what time the Jabs boys go on and do theirs. We'll have to do it before them. 
try to get on around 7 p.m. tomorrow and see. How's that? 7 p.m. sound good? All right. Sounds good to me. I don't know if you guys want to see anything or want to talk about anything. Um, I've been showing a lot of people, you know, a lot of my stuff already um, the last couple of days. Um, some of you guys are new to the channel, so I'll let you I'll let you gawk at this for a little bit. No, it's not the uh, it's not the manufactured relics. Got left. I have left three packs. I had four. I opened one up as a celebration for my 250 subscriber giveaway. There's the uh, receipt from the card store that I bought them from way back in 1992. I paid uh, $30 a pack. They are, after I opened it up, um, they're from Series 1. That year they produced three series. The hard, hardest one and the most expensive cards basically come out of Series 3, obviously, because they were short printed. And um, the, the big dollar card in this um, is the uh, Roger Stallback rookie card. I believe it's his rookie. Maybe I'm wrong, but his Roger Stallback card is the... The money card. There's a Joe Namath card in there as well. I think Namath has a in action card in series one and a base card in series two, something like that. Or maybe he's in three. I'm not sure. But yeah, I bought these. They're been sitting around in in many of my different boxes out the years throughout the years. The gum. Thank you. you hear that? The gum did is not sticking. I've taken very good care of these. Uh, packs so the gum is loose as a goose in there it's loose it's just and I tried to get um, I tried to get uh, John Jabs to eat the gum from the other box of uh, that I opened up I tried to see if I would get him to eat it and he said no and I tried Eric, and Eric said no. So, and they have no sense of adventure. So, uh, let's see. Everybody pay attention. Do you know why the Astros changed their uniforms? All right, trivia question. I don't know. Changed their uniforms to what they have now versus the old softball-looking uniforms with the star that was supposed to have a number in. And the star was too small to put numbers in it from that uniform. Yeah, the leaf box would be the best box. I, I agree. Um, let's see. So, so, um, am I reading that? Darnella, right? Darnella Camp. You're you're new you're new here. So you haven't seen. You sound like you're a Yankee fan. Um. So, and some of these guys may have seen it already. Now I gotta put for the box. I started putting everything away again because I'm trying to get out of. This is my son's old bedroom he has since gotten married and moved out so i kind of took it over but i'm going to be moving out into the garage because i have way too much stuff way too much stuff so i gotta buy a shed put a shed up move everything out of the garage into the shed and then move all my cards down into the garage but oh my god that's not there there's some things you guys some of you may have seen some of you not i've shown these before but there we go
I got two. Um, 1909 T206s. For our Yankee fans out there, I've had these up. I put these up for good luck when I when I opened up the last set of of uh, score. Looking for the man all autograph. I got those two. The M&M &M boys. Mantle and Maris. Uh, Mantle you can't see because of the light. So I'm going to put them up here. There's Mantle. Better. Um, about a day after Willie McCovey passed away. I got that. I bought that off of eBay. Um, and I did the, the buy it now before the uh, the seller could change it because it was up for a while. And I just decided to uh, – I got that one for $2 at the flea market. That's a uh, BCC G9, Chipper Jones. I got this one. Uh, I forget where I got that one there. But that's a mint 9 Jeter. Let's get to the Yankees. Other Yankees. Do I have any other Yankees? I do have. So I don't really do like other sports like football and and hockey and and, and um, basketball. That doesn't mean I don't like it. I don't like the sport. I, I like the sport. I bought this um, at the beginning of the year. A little bit hard to see because of the glare, but let me prop it up for you. Joe Namath, he was my hero as a kid growing up. Loved the Jets, loved Joe Willie Namath. So I had to get that. Um, and one that I, one of the few other autographs that I have that I had since I was really younger. It's a little hard to see. It's a Joe Montana. I have to hold it up. Is it back back in the day? We we used pens. We didn't use have these fancy sharpies and stuff. Everything was done in pen. So Joe Montana signed that and an eight by ten for me. So good one there. I'm looking. Some of you guys may have seen that one already. A Chipper Jones auto that I pulled out of a pulled out of a, a box, a pack, pack from a box. And it's number six eleven of God knows how many they had him sign. Because there's four digits there. Could be, you know, nine thousand nine hundred and ninety-nine. Who knows? This is one I just I just love this card. Um, it's all it's been it's miscut and and all that. All I did was have them grade the um, the autograph. They gave me the autograph as a as a ten authentic uh, Harmon Killebrew. I think it might be his rookie card, but the person, whoever had it before me, you know, I don't know. They just cut off all the fuzziness, and it still ended up with fuzziness. So I don't know. But I figure it can't hurt to have it signed. I'm not destroying like a, a good card. I'm destroying a destroyed card, kind of. If anything, it increased the value of that that junky card exponentially. Especially now, since he's passed away, can't get that anymore. All right, here's some Yankees. Bobby Mercer. Can't get his anymore. He's not with us either. Uh, issues with gum. I don't know either. Yeah. Don't know. I'm old, but I'm not that old. Um, here's a Dave Winfield. 
and uh, I don't know why they I don't know why they said the autograph was an eight because I mean it's it's a good signature. It's not faded. If you look at if you look at any other Winfield card that's not signed, like in that blue, that's blue in the background. That's not faded from the from the signature or anything like that. That is in the photo. All that blue in the background. I wish I had another one. To, I have another one. I just don't have it right here. So I don't know why they graded that the signature as an eight instead of a ten. Don't know. And I, I picked this up for a buck at the flea market. And I'm like, okay, what's the error in this card? I mean, wrote over the top of the front. One dollar error. I'm like, what's the error? And then I flipped it over. And it's like, oh, there's nothing on the back. It's a blank back. So, cool. Not really an error card. I mean, not like everyone was printed that way. It's just uh, somehow that sheet didn't get stamped on the other side i guess you find them i have football cards that are that way um i think i picked i picked these up at the flea market these were i think i paid 15 dollars for all of these cards let me find them I paid 15 bucks for all four of these cards, but it's, I mean, I already had them, but, you know, it's, it's, to me, the price seemed fair. Here's a Brooks Robinson I um, bought off eBay, but he signs through the mail. So what I did is I got some TTMs from him, and then I, I bought this off. It's already PSA authenticated, and then I compared his chicken scratch signature with the ones I got through the mail, and they were they were legit. They were his signatures. Looked exactly like that. And I have some older cards, but I just can't find them. Oh, oh, here you go. This is for um, this is for um, Yankee fans out there. That's my Derek Jeter autograph. I just broke that out yesterday because Eric pulled some out on his breaks. And he pulled out a Jeter card, so I'm like, yeah, okay, I got me a Jeter card too, autograph relic. So I think I paid like 350 bucks for that. Off of eBay. Um, again, some of you guys have seen this before, but I got some new people. I got this um, out of a, a bulk lot that I bought off a guy. I got over 300,000 cards. Um, and this was just mixed in, in, in some of the boxes. I had big boxes of all kinds of stuff. Um, uncut sheets of cards, um, autograph, you know, like um, jerseys, like in framed, framed jerseys. Um, so that came with it. It was pretty cool because I didn't have a Frank Robinson autograph up until then. And, well, we all know we can't get Frank Robinson in person anymore. Now you got to buy it. So, and it's got its own little certificate of authenticity. So it's all cool. It's Nabisco All-Star all Legends. And there's several in that set. There's a Yogi Bear. There's other ones you can get. They're out there. And then for those of you who, who do like football, because I know we have people who like other sports too, um, some of the things that, that you know I've collected over the years. So these are the big cards that you can buy, separate packs of these big cards.
It's a Fran Tarkington when he played for the Giants, not the Vikings. How about Len Dawson? And let me know if you see a white Ford Bronco in the neighborhood. O.J. Simpson, um, that's a rookie card. Of, um, but it's the, the big card. He's, you know, the, he also has the exact same photo in the regular set, and then he's got a small one, and I had them out somewhere. Um, but I'm separating. I'm putting everything back by sport because I had them all mixed up. Um, so it was moved. Um, and then I also have some bigs in baseball. Again, for you Yankee fans, of course, rest in peace, Mel Stoudemire. He's no longer with us. Roy White signs through the mail, TTM. He signs. If you guys do TTM stuff. Yankee fans. Again, I'm just bringing this out for Yankee fans because I know some of you may have seen this, but I really, I really am proud of some of the stuff that I got from my Yankees. How about a Whitey Ford? Um, uh, Autograph relic piece of uh, Jersey Now Whitey doesn't sign anymore. He used to do TTM too, but he um, He's got uh, dementia Alzheimer's So he's done basically he cannot sign anymore um, Along with Tom Seaver Tom Seaver if you don't have his autograph by now you better pick it up because he will Unfortunately, probably not be with as much longer either. So. Sounded like we had an Astro fan out there, right? Um, where's he at? Tex, if you're still here. How about a Biggio autograph relic? I picked it up for $20. Beginning of the year off of eBay. Nice. I got lucky and just like, I don't know, no one was bid. It's numbered. It's numbered three out of 25, too. So, not bad. I got lucky, got some stuff at some neat prices. Um, it's not an autograph. There's a relic uh, done Mattingly. Game worn jersey card. So nice Donny baseball. And whenever I'm out and about, um, I look for. Things like this. Now it's an old, it's in an old beat up uh, thing, but this is what I bought it in at the flea market, and it's a promo card that were these were sent out to like dealers and stuff like that to promote like the product to entice them to buy it. So here you go. We give you some free cards, and all you gotta do is buy several cases of this stuff. And again, for you Yankee fans, there's a Don Larson. Autograph. That's an eBay purchase, but I did send TTM to him. I bought this, and it's not certified, but I just bought one off eBay, too, to compare signatures, and it's the same. So. Yankee fans. There's a Bernie Williams uh, bat relic. I have a Williams autograph somewhere too. Books for 20. It's numbered to 91. Books for 20 bucks, it says. But you can have it for six. Huge markdown. How could you resist?
Reggie Jackson um, relic card. Congratulations, you have received a card that contains a piece of an authentic game-worn uniform. This uniform was worn by Reggie Jackson of the New York Yankees. So there we go. Not autographed. And I do not have a, a Reggie Jackson autograph in my collection. So that's something uh, I have to look for. How about this? Now, now, all you guys may not know this, but I'm going to throw up a little trivia question for you, too. All right, this guy's a Yankee. Ron Bloomberg. Hey, Thundercat. So, okay. So someone's got a bucket card list of a 52 mantle. Woo, good luck there. Um, so Ron Bloomberg then, uh, Darnello. What's, what's his claim to fame? Oops, sorry. What's Ron Bloomberg's claim to fame? He's got some like turn back to clock cards and stuff like that. If you don't know, just say, I give up or whatever, and I'll tell you. I don't want to spoil it without letting you have a get, having a guess. Ah, uh, hey, Thunder, how's it going? Uh, you know, it's going good. Everyone's been hanging out. We've been, I've been showing some of my stuff. Um, uh, I did, uh, I did open up these, um, you missed it, so you don't have to go back and watch it, but I opened up this box tonight. 98 Omega, which is a Pacific product. And out of that, we did pull some of the chase cards. But they were Juan Gonzalez. Juan Gonzalez. And this is a base Derek Jeter. The parallels are red. And we picked up these two cards. One is a Junior. And basically, then the rest were just red parallels and or base cards. So, so Ron Bloomberg's claim to fame. His claim to fame is he is the very first designated hitter in the history of Major League Baseball. Right there. That's his claim to fame. Hey, you know, he hit a few home runs for the Yankees, but that's main, his main claim to fame. Um. That's it. He did have a, uh, after three years in the major leagues, he still had a 306 batting average. He had 33 home runs. Not many triples, only four triples. He could not run, that's for sure. He couldn't leg out a triple. And 246 hits. But he played longer than just three years. That's just this third year card. So that's his, that's a little bit of trivia for you. Now you know. And when someone asks you that question again, when a Yankee fan comes up to you and tries to stump you with a Yankee question, you can stump them back with that question. Because they probably won't know. What else do we have here? Hmm. So, you missed it. Um, Thunder. Um, tomorrow, we kind of took a vote with the people that were here in the room. And tomorrow, around 7 o'clock Eastern Time, I'm going to open this up and we're going to go through these cards. Hopefully, they're not all bricked up. We will see. Are all what? All these autos? Um, pretty much, yeah. Chipper, um, Bob, uh, Bobby Mercer, Dave Winfield, Harmon Killebrew, 
That's one of my few football, Joe Namath. Joe Montana. You've probably already seen my mantle and mask because I had the M&M boys out the other day. You have a 36, and it's autographed. That's nice. McCovey. Chipper is not autographed. And neither is Derek. That's just a facsimile autograph. I have a bunch more, but my autograph collection, which is only about, I don't know, 900 cards, including any doubles and triples, you know, whatever, 900 total. My, uh, my boss... It's got 9,000. 9,000 autograph cards. All baseball. Um, and his goal is to get uh, the living ones. I just can't get the ones that are dead now. Uh, every autograph of everybody who had at least one major league at bat. And he has double. So he, has, he said he has about 6,000. Singles, and then he's got duplicates. And he says that he wanted to sell me a thousand of his, his doubles. And he wanted to know what I would pay for them. He said I couldn't even, I couldn't pay you even a dollar a piece for them. That's a thousand dollars, you know, for a thousand cards. To me, it's not worth it. I didn't want to break his heart and say it's not worth it because they're not certified. They're all TTMs. Um, so. I just don't want to take that chance. I've been burned. So what year is your um, 30? I mean, not what year, but what manufacturer is your 36 card? Is it like a play ball? Um, is it one of the Ted Williams card companies? I don't know when Ted Williams put his out. Probably not in 36. That's for sure. Could be Fleer. Could be a Fleer, right? I think Fleer was making cards back then. Pick this up at the flea market for you Yankee fans. So it's a little Yankee booklet. This is a record. This is a, like a little... It's not even punched. It's still got the center thing in there. Never been played on a record player. It's like a little 45. I have no idea what it says. It's just a talking baseball card. I'm assuming it's just going to be Mickey Mantle talking to fans. I don't know. Talking about baseball. It says play at 33. So it's a it's a 45 size 33 RPM record. And inside are just some cards with Mickey Mantle. So we have, I mean, I've seen these cards before, and there's probably some autograph ones floating around. Whether they're legit or not, I don't know. But and I don't know what these are in the back here. I guess they're part of it too. Oh, I just got one with Donnie Baseball on it and Kevin Moss too. That in the same holder, yeah. And the Mickey Mantle story. Okay, so that photo. Does it jive up with this? No, it's different. I was just looking at my my father-in-law. That's my book when I was a kid. I read it. I did a book report on it in school. You know, the baseball life of Mickey Mantle. And then my father-in-law picked these up. My greatest day in baseball, and it's you know Mickey Mantle, Sandy Koufax. They all talk about, I guess, one of their their best days as a professional ball player. Um, the Mick. And then he picked up home run, baseball's greatest hits. Baseball's greatest hits and hitters. And then he got me this. All-time greatest who's who in baseball. 
and I have some of these somewhere. And he just got me another one. It's an it's an older World Series records book, um, probably many of which are broken it's from 1909 to 1977. So yeah. There's Thurman Munson celebrating with looks like Mike Torres. And my father was a huge Yankee fan, so I got after my father. I mean, even while I was alive, he kept giving me stuff. Um, and then he got sick and uh, cancer finally got him. Uh, and then I got a lot of his Yankee stuff that he had. Yeah, this is pretty neat. And I picked up one, too. And I don't know where I put it, but it was a Don Mattingly one. The same vendor had them both. So I bought them both off of them. <clears throat> Very cheap. I think he charged me like three bucks a piece. And I don't I do not do football, but this was at a yard sale. So I'm like, you know what? For like five bucks, you know, Steve Van Buren, why not? Take a chance. It's only five bucks invested. Could be. Could be legit. Might not be. Who knows? It's a gamble, right? It's like playing the stock market. Um, I don't know. Like, I showed you guys all this other stuff. I don't know. Like, I gotta, I actually physically have to dig out more stuff. Pick these up at the flea market, unopened. Um, these are actually this is what's inside of these. I bought a bunch of these when I was young, but of course they didn't have any unopened anymore. It was a game. You just kept score on the back, and you maybe went up against. You know, one of your your friends, and you just rub off a card. And I just didn't rub these off. I rubbed off a bunch, so trust me, these are the ones that I didn't rub off. I don't know what happened to the ones I rubbed off. I probably threw them away. Who knows? This is the pen I used to try to get autographs with. Um, it's a very nice pen. Very fluid. And it's also like then can't do it because it doesn't run on the plastic, but um, it becomes a keepsake and it goes with a bunch of the autographs that I've gotten in person. So, and of course, in inside of all the the lots that I buy, there's all these oddball stuff too. I get a lot, a lot of oddball stuff. Um, like, like this. These are, um, police, police department cards. Um, so I just put them in, um, penny sleeves to kind of preserve them. Some of them are like kind of local, like over in Philly, that side. And then I got some, there's some Dukes of Hazard cards that were here. Like there must have been like one or two packs that I didn't open them up; they were already loose. And then some Beetle cards. Must have been a pack of Beetle cards that someone had, and they're not the old, old ones; they're the the newer ones, but still probably fairly old. And then there's these boxers. I don't know. And then a whole bunch of these racing ones. Drag racing, I guess. And NASCAR, drag racing. Now some NASCAR. Okay, NASCAR stuff. And there was a big stack of them. Probably a hundred of those. You get all kinds of crazy stuff. Like the stuff like my last purchase that I bought. Um, is 
you know, people tell me, I don't, I don't see how you can not be going through them already and whatever, you know. I'm like, trust me, I, I'm, I'm holding off. It, it is taking a lot of willpower to not go through them, but I have a plan. I'm trying to stick to my plan, which is to save them for winter. If you guys watch the Game of Thrones, winter is coming. And for me, that spells that basically the end of flea marketing. And flea marketing took up like my Sunday. That's what I did on Sundays. Um, so to fill that void in my production schedule, I'm going to open up one of those like every other day. Uh, there's 42 5,000 count boxes. So if I go through and sort one with y'all, you get to see what I get to see at the same time I get to see it. You know what I'm saying? So it'll be a, any surprises will be a surprise for all of us. And we get to enjoy them together. By the way, guys, if you get a chance, if you get a chance, um, hop on over to um, to hold on, hold on. It's uh, coming to me. God, uh, big wicked discounts. How's it going? Um, hop on over to. I got it. It's right on the tip of my tongue. Um, hold on, I'll get there. Or maybe I won't get there. All right, I got it written down. Hop on over. Hey, Elkanen, how's it going? Um, God, he won my 500 subscriber giveaway. And it was, oh, Big Country's Wheelhouse. Big Country's Wheelhouse, go check it out. He posted the, uh, his, what he won, what I gave him for being the uh, winner of my 500 subscriber giveaway. And uh, go check it out. And got a lot of stuff. Uh, he didn't, he didn't open up anything. He just did like an unboxing, and then he plans on doing videos of each thing. And it's a pretty nice haul. But my 750, and by the way, I'm like 100, less than 100 subscribers away from hitting my 750 subscriber milestone. And once that's done, you guys check out that video that I've already got posted. And um, I'll have to go back and put links to that in the description of the last couple of live feeds that I've done. And that'll... Um, direct you to it. It's about eight or nine videos back now. Um, but it's it's been posted over a week ago. So um, probably closer to two. It might say two weeks now. Um, 750 subscribers. I'm going to tell you right now. It's four boxes of cards and a whole bunch of other stuff. So go check it out. Follow the rules to subscribe if you want to enter to win it. That's one of the main rules. Well, there's several main rules. You know, like, subscribe, comment. Commenting can be anything. I, it's just whatever. Um, but you have to live in the lower continental 48, you know, United States. Because the shipping on this is going to probably run me about 50 bucks. Um, and then as soon as I give away that 750 subscriber, I'm pressing on. We're going to go forward into getting 1,000 subscribers. And I'm, as soon as I... Reach the 750 milestone. I'm going to post a thousand subscriber video. I shot all three at the same time, so everything's been kind of sitting around waiting to go. Um, just waiting to hit the milestones. And um, yeah, I, I'm sure, guys, I want to get rid of this stuff, so you know, help help me get to uh, to 750 and then to a thousand, and uh, I'll be unloading some of this stuff. All right, so for All right, Thundercat, thanks for stopping by. Um, so anyway, tomorrow we'll be opening this. Probably at 7 p.m. Eastern time. I know I have some followers on the on the, the West Coast, uh, but uh, it's going to be a scheduling thing because the Jabs boys are going to be doing their Friday thing, I'm sure, and that's 
that hurts everyone else who tries to do anything on um, on a Friday evening. So. So. Anyway. Um, is there anything else I can answer for anybody? Anyone got any questions? Um, feel free to shoot, fire away. Um, if it's like a specific card, probably not going to be able to just dig it, dig it out, guys, because I think I did this yesterday. Because everything is kind of buried over there. Everything is buried over there. And then what's over? Over there is more stuff. And that's only about a third of it. I can't pan it down. But that's, that's only a third. Of it. So the stuff on this side is like non baseball. It's football, basketball, hockey. Um, everything on the other side is all baseball. And this is only about a third, a third of what I've got. The rest is downstairs and has to be moved. My wife is getting a little agitated because I have taken up um, too much space in her house. So I have to move it out. Um, so I got to put everything, I got to move everything into the garage. I got to build, get a shed, put a shed up in the backyard, move the garage to the shed and move the carts to the garage. But that'll be all right because... Then I'll be able to set up a really nice studio, maybe with a, maybe with uh, some tables and stuff like that, and be able to have a lot of room to actually display stuff for people. Because right now my monitor, I got a 40-inch monitor, because I play video games and stuff like that too. I like gaming, and um, so I like to do that. That that helps me to relax and stuff, and. Um, I enjoy this too, but I don't want to preoccup preoccupy myself with YouTube. Hey, Thundercat, I listen. I just uh, I saw your questions. I have 60 stuff, sure. Um, not a whole, I mean, a lot, but not a whole lot. If, if that makes any sense. Um, okay, okay. Um, well, I was going to do one tomorrow at 7 o'clock Eastern time because I'm in New Jersey. Yeah, it gets late. Uh, that you're true. Uh, you know, I, I've i been doing them so late that I overslept again this morning. And I was late for work. <laughs> tomorrow at 7 p.m., though, I'll do uh, I'll do that one box of FLIR there, that 92 FLIR. Hopefully it's not all bricked up, and uh, we'll get that out of the way. I just don't want to interfere with other people because they have established schedules. Mine. My schedule is just whoop, I, whatever I feel like doing, you know. But, yes, tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Thank you, Thunder, um, for stopping by, though, and saying hey to everybody. All right, Wicked, if you're still here, thanks for stopping by. Um, so anyone else have any questions? If not, I'm probably going to let y'all go. Um, I don't want to preoccupy all your, your night. I don't know where, where's every, so for those of you that are still here, where are you from? Like East coast, West coast, in this middle of the country, like a time zone type thing. My wife wants to take a drive down to Virginia soon. She wants to pick up a piece of furniture. So I might have to do some um, some uh, recon of Facebook Marketplace. By the way, Facebook Marketplace, guys, can be your um, can be your best friend if you're looking for cards, if you don't have any uh, local card shops or anything like that. Um, no flea markets or flea markets don't have, like, a lot of people selling, like, baseball cards and stuff. When I was down south in South Carolina, it was very, very slim pickings for cards when I was down there. I was hoping to go down there and, and 
you know, get a nice variety of stuff. And I came home with, um, <coughs> I came home with, I actually came home with a lot because I found, I drove around to different card shops all over the state and even went into Georgia, uh, to get a card shop. And this one guy, um, had some 5,000 count boxes there. They were fairly cheap. I bought some 5,000 count boxes of cards off of them. Uh, you know, didn't even look at them. Just said, okay, I'll take them, you know, uh, bought some new stuff. Um, but then I did go to one flea market. It was the route one flea market. If anyone's here from South Carolina still, um, route one flea market. And there's one right next to it too, uh, about a mile, half a mile up the road. Those two I hit up, got some cards out of there, individual cards, but very very um they're more into nascar down there yeah i'm at uh i'm at 651 ish now last time i looked so yeah i'm less than 100 away from seven uh 750 giveaway and uh can't wait to do that and then obviously the next uh, milestone is 1,000 plus. And uh, then from there, I don't know. We'll see. The sky's the limit. The 1,000. Yeah, 1,000 subscribers would be great. And then I'll be able to stream with my phone and do other things which make me more portable. I can, um, I'm not sure I can do it if I can stream live, doing flea market stuff live. That would be great, right? People would love to see love to see that i think because then i don't have to be turning the camera on turn the camera off i have a battery backup i can just hook to my phone that gives me an extra two hours worth of battery time for my phone and i can just kind of walk around people can tune in live you know instead of me recording down and editing they can just watch what they want because when i go to flea markets i'll spend an hour or two at the flea market you know You know, I I would really so so this is something I uh, I, I kind of picked up from um, Danny and Gray's. I liked his little format where he sits around and he just kind of shows people his stuff and shares what he's got. Like I was watching watching him do some live stuff uh, before I went live. And when he shut down, then I I came over and turned on live, and I was commenting on he had this poster in the background. Uh, it was like I don't know, I had like. 50 or 60 nascar drivers now he does a lot of nascar and he's from the south uh so um you know that's his that's their shtick down there they they love their nascar and one thing i do have to say about nascar people is they are not afraid to stop and sign your your sign your autographs for you nothing like that yeah, i mean he's proven that with his his videos going to the racetracks and the drivers just walk to work down the line like on a red carpet and they'll sign for everyone there, you know, and not just one thing. He'll go there with a book with eight or nine things in it, and they'll sign every one of them for you. So I love, I love that about NASCAR people. I wish baseball guys, football guys would be the same way and really respect the fans more. I mean, there obviously they're going to be a, there's a few NASCAR guys that that don't take the time to do that, but for the most part, you can say. 99% of them do that. So if you haven't ever checked out Danny and Gray's Cards and Toys, uh, you should go check them out, sub them up, get them going, help them uh, grow their channel. Um, you know, we are we are a, a community, and we can all, we can all, you know, grow our channels together. And all it takes is a sub here, sub there, sub there. Like, I'm, I'm almost always maxed out on my subs. I wish that YouTube would not put a limit on the number of subscribers you can have because, I mean, I'd be subbing everybody, but I get to a point where I sub and then I get this little warning back says, eh, sorry, you, you can't subscribe because your number of subscribers exceeds, you know, the number of subscriptions you can put out. So I don't know what the, the ratio is that they, they put. At first, I was just getting warnings because I sub too many times within a 24-hour period. Now I just get the one that tells me, Sorry, you subscribed, uh, and you have no more subscribers to bump that against. So I don't know what their their thing is, their algorithm is, or whatever they use to, you know, determine 
uh, how worthy you are to subscribe to people. Also, also I, I, I heard somewhere that their algorithm, if you sub to somebody, and but you don't kind of go there, you just do a sub for sub, but if you don't go there and watch some videos or commenting, commenting, then their algorithm picks that up, and they won't automatically unsub you from that channel. That's happened to me. I was automatically unsubbed from Donald Rumdahl. And I'm like, why did I said I know I subscribed to him? Why am I not getting notifications? And I go to his channel and it's like, I'm not subbed. And I said, I know I subscribe. So I subscribe again, you know. And it happened even for uh, Eric Jabs. I was unsubscribed from him for some reason. I'm like, I know I didn't unsubscribe. You know, I, I don't know. Um, it's, you know, I, I don't know. I just, I speak from my heart, I guess, and how I feel. And the one thing I will not do is get political or religious on my channel. I do not want to alienate anyone, you know, because of political views, you know, or and or religious views. People are entitled to their view, and, and I respect that. So I will not force my opinion on anyone like that. We're all adults for the most part, and we have a, our own mind, and we can make up our own mind, you know, as to <clears throat> how to feel and, and all that stuff. But getting back to the YouTube channels, I mean, we should just help. I subscribe. When I'm in Eric's channel, I'm going down every name that I don't recognize, and I'm making sure that I'm subscribed to them. I'll hit them up, and I'll subscribe to them, and I'll make sure that I got subs. You know, because whether they got content or not, it's like one day they might want to um, start a channel and they'll already have a couple hundred subs sitting there ready to rock, you know. It may help them to make up their mind to say, you know what, it's time for me to make a video. Um, let's do it. You know, then they'll they'll get involved and they'll start asking questions of other, uh, other YouTubers like... Um, El Kanan, who, who I was in a um, uh, channel with him earlier tonight, and we were all discussing kind of the whole YouTube thing and how to best live stream. Like, I was under the impression, too, like a lot of people are, that um, you can't live stream until you have met the requirements of 1,000 subscribers. Who was my favorite player? My favorite player old school was Mickey Mantle. My father named me after him. My first name is Mickey, by the way. So, um, Mickey Mantle's my guy. Um, other than that, I don't know. I'm just a Yankee guy. Frank Thomas, yeah, the big hurt. He's still relevant. He's still doing commercials. Um, but, um, you know, um, just help each other out. Help each other with subscriptions and and the likes that's important the algorithm algorithm picks up all the thumbs up and comments you know even if like sometimes i'll watch i'll watch videos and even if i don't like feel like making a comment i'll make a comment and it'll be something like especially about one specific card like oh I, hey i really like that card you know give them a comment and the algorithm picks that up and it helps them a little bit you know it keeps you sub to their channel because their algorithm will unsub you if you subscribe to someone and you don't ever go back to that channel, I guess. Yeah, the Frank Thomas uh, no name on front card. That'd be a nice one to get. Is that 1990 tops? 89 tops, maybe? I don't know. I don't have one, so I could tell you. I mean, I have, I have one with the name on it, but I don't have a no name, so. And to tell you the truth, in the 90s, I wasn't collecting cards. Um, everything I got from, like, I stopped around 85, about a lot, same time a lot of other people stopped. Um, because, you know, well, whatever. First off, I joined, I joined the Air Force in 1981. So that made it hard to collect because now I'm, 
I'm overseas and I'm living in Germany and you know, I'm newly married and starting a family. So all my money has to go towards that. It doesn't go towards the hobby anymore. What are the fun things that you like to do. So later on, um, when was it? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I started really hardcore back into it again around 2015. Off and on in between now and then, my son would buy me some packs of cards or a blaster box, you know, every once in a while. But um, one time uh, for Christmas, he bought me a complete top set, you know. And so um, my sons, both my sons collected at one point, but my, my youngest son, who this is his old room, um, moved. Uh, he stopped. He stopped collecting altogether. Or he's, I mean, his collection, I have it. He was a Ken Griffey Jr. guy. He loved Ken Griffey Jr. I would go to card shows with him, and we would pick up Griffey Jr. stuff. I bought an autograph ball and stuff like this, but he doesn't do it anymore. You know, and he doesn't really want. I don't think he really even wants to get involved in it anymore. So. It is what it is. He's having a little boy now. He's going to have his, he has two daughters, and you see them in my other videos, the Chaos uh, Sisters. Um, he's got two daughters, and now that she's, they're expecting their first son, so maybe that'll change. Maybe it'll spark something in him. I know he does a lot of stuff with his girls. Like tomorrow, he asked me uh, this weekend, Sunday, if I wanted to go up to Six Flags, you know, um, Great adventure in, in, in Jackson, New Jersey, but I'm like, nah, uh, I'm not going to go. It's going to be too much for the old man because I want to want to do everything, you know, ride the roller coasters, all that stuff. And uh, I shouldn't be doing all that. <clears throat> not that I'm too old, you know, but I just stay home and do my cards, you know, and look like I might have to plan a trip in the next week or so. And my wife wants to go to Virginia and pick up a piece of furniture. And I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to be able to pick up some boxes of cards on that. Make that a dual purpose trip. Well, so the, the, the thing is, you can get a, a, a the camera I use. It's not the best either. I paid like 40 some dollars for it off of uh, Amazon. But it has autofocus. It's not the best camera. It's not a high tech, you know, but then again, the channel's not drawing in thousands of, of dollars a month like some other people's channels may be doing. I'm not that big yet. And frankly, I don't know if you, I want to be that big because it looks like it's, you have 10 subs. I bet you I'm one of them. And uh, it'll grow. It'll come. Mine was real slow. You know, I had 20 subs for, I don't know, a year and a half. 20 subscribers. You know what it was? My wife, my two sons, some friends from work, some relatives, and friends of my son. That's it. And I was pumping out content. I was pumping out content. If you go back and you check my playlists, you'll see I probably got, I don't know, 500 videos total, maybe. I forget what the exact number is. I did all kinds of gaming stuff. You know, um, and that's what I was doing. I really enjoyed it. Like I said, like I said earlier, I enjoyed gaming video, uh, playing games too. Um, I can't wait to retire. I'm not quite old enough yet. I'm only 60 at six zero. So I'm not old enough to retire yet, but hopefully within the next two years I will be. And then this becomes a full time. Hopefully I'll be established well enough that this becomes my full time job, kind of, you know, hobby. It's the best thing, best kind of job to have is is a job you love, a hobby, something that you enjoy. So why not? And and then be able to do some traveling and go a little bit further out to do flea marketing. You know, I've had on my on my uh, <clears throat> wish list to head out into Central PA. There's some flea markets out there uh, closer to to Jabs territory. Um, they're out in Pittsburgh. Uh, this would be more like towards um, Hershey and stuff like that. And um, just 
hit some some uh, flea markets out there, see what they got. And uh, Merlin has some uh, some card stuff down there. Um, being able to travel and and buy bulk lots. There's a there's a place up in Farmingdale, New York. They buy estates and stuff like that. They buy um, bulk car. <coughs> Excuse me, I need a drink. They buy bulk um, cards from people, like people's collections and stuff like that. And then they turn around and sell uh, what they don't want by the box, like 5,000 count box for $7, you know. And then if you want, like, all rookies, you know, it costs you. I, you know, I, um, the pharmacies around here don't have anything like that. I have Walmarts. I have two Walmarts within, you know, five miles of me. Um, I did go to the Dollar General, and um, I, I went in there and looked. I couldn't find anything, so I asked the one clerk. I asked the kid. I said, hey, kid, you, got, you got any, like, sports cards here, baseball cards? And he pointed, and they had a very little selection. There were no baseball, so I didn't buy them um, because I like to focus on baseball. I probably shouldn't. Because I think I could attract a bigger audience if I did everything, but everything means cost you more money, and then I don't want to. I don't deal in those anymore. I don't. I don't want to get involved in sports that I don't understand anymore. That I, that I'm so far out of touch with that it, it, you know, you're out of it. Right now, I have a hard enough time pronouncing the the new players' names. Yes, I have two two uh, WalMarts within. Uh, within five miles of my house one south and one north so i live in new jersey so it's a pretty populated state here you know but i would rather go to a flea market and find stuff that people you know one man's junk is another man's treasure So 450,000 cards is a lot of cards. There's a lot of people don't even have that. You know? It it doesn't take long to amass a lot, trust me. If you if you use um, resources available to you as far as uh, and you have to be a shrewd a shrewd buyer too. I'm not saying lowball someone, but know what you want and what you're willing to pay for. That's key. So Facebook Marketplace, Facebook Marketplace, uh, I know you're uh, in West Virginia, right? I know, so you're probably rural, like a lot of um, South Carolina is rural, but um, I, you know, it, it, so yeah, um, it's expensive. It's expensive no matter where you go, you know. Um, and then it's all uh, obviously based on family dollar. I looked in the family dollars in South Carolina. I didn't see any cards in them. So I don't, we don't have family dollar up here. We have like a dollar general or something like that. I'm sure they're owned by the same parent company, but uh, we only have one of those. Um, and that's right here in my town. <clears throat> Like I said, I went there and the guy Okay, well I mean that's probably not a bad deal. You get five you get a hundred cards for five bucks, right? Maybe a uh, unopened pack or two. So But it's, you know, it is what it is, right? I mean, yeah, and you get a chance to have an auto, right? So, really, for five bucks, you get an, a, an autograph. Hopefully, it's someone nice. More than likely not. I understand the odds of that. But, um, you know, I have a guy here. So, so, through Facebook Marketplace, I've networked myself. One in four boxes has an auto. Okay. Through Facebook Marketplace. I network myself. I have a guy who's called me now twice 
uh, not call me, but text message me twice this past week uh, about autograph cards. And he sells his product on Facebook Marketplace. Like I just saw tonight, he posted a um, a Bob Gibson autograph card, one of these certified certified on the back, you know, from the card manufacturer autograph card. Um, Thirty dollars. Now, that's a decent price. But, and you got to consider, you know, do I have one already? And any, the price of anything is only worth what a person is willing to pay. I could probably get it for 20 bucks off of them if I talk them down or whatever. But I focus more on, on what I want to put in my, in my uh, boxes for my uh, eBay store. If I get it, ever get it up and running, I'm still working on getting the autographs together. One random autograph. So I, I told him I would just want to focus on like the one. What if you have for a dollar, which be like the no name guys, but they're all certified. See, right now I got 50% of our, our TTM stuff. And the other 50% is um, certified through the card manufacturers. <clears throat> and I want to put them in there and just kind of give them out as freebies to entice sales that way. Or I can just use that product that I have and use it for Patreon giveaways that way too. Because, you know, I, I'm setting up my Patreon and where I get like, I think I have, I'm setting up a three, a five, a seven, and a $10 tier. That's it. I'm only setting up 10 of each because I want to get swamped right off the bat. I don't know if that'll ever happen, but I don't want to get to where I'm at a flustered point like Eric Jabs is. He just sounds like he's really, really getting overwhelmed with all his Patreon things he's got to do. He's got to do, he's doing his breaks. He's doing these live auctions. <clears throat> yeah, I know. He, he kind of doesn't have that personal touch anymore. Um, I mean, you, you, I realize his chat, like it's just you and me and chat and there's, there's three other people here with you, and you're the only one talking, you know, but they're just listening and they're absorbing, you know, they're taking it all in too. But with Eric, his chat goes so fast that he can't, he doesn't have time to open packs and look at his chat. <clears throat> he doesn't have time to reach down and get the next auction card because I even tried typing in his chat. About the only time you can get his attention is, is when you super chat him. And then you get acknowledged, which I understand. Yeah, that's part of the super chat thing. Okay, you donated donated money, and I owe him a lot. I got a lot of subscribers by going and super chatting him, and putting it out there. My channel, advertising my channel, in front of his audience. It's like paying for that commercial during the Super Bowl. You know, is like <clears throat> here it is. You've got three minutes. Give me your best shot. So, yeah, and, and so this is the thing that I, let me digress a little bit here uh, from Danny and Gray's Cards and Toys. He'll sit around and he'll talk to his audience. He doesn't care if it's one guy, two guys, three guys, five guys, ten guys. I think the most I've ever had in, uh, and there's Big Country. Hey, Big Country, I just told people to go check you out, too, for your the, the unboxing of the 500 subscriber giveaway thing. <clears throat> there you go. And your 200 subscriber giveaway that you're having. I hope you don't mind. I'm not going to, I'm not going to enter your 200 subscriber giveaway. I will let someone else win that. Cause you never know. I might win it. I'm not really usually that lucky, but you know what I mean? I've got, I've got enough stuff. I got too much stuff right now. Oh, already. Okay. I watched it, but maybe I wasn't really watching it that closely. Because you're at 250-something now, aren't you? At 240-something? Oh, that's right. You did do a winner. That's right. I did see it. You did the random You did the random comment. Yes. All right. I do. I do remember that now. That's right. All right. I might have... See? I like the wheel thing. 
because it builds suspense for a longer time, you know what I mean, for your audience than just a random commenter. Now, do you verify their subscription to your channel before you just give them something? You should, it's me, part of the requirement is you got to be sub to my channel because that's how you got to your point. Yes, that's how you got to where you're at today, by your subscribers. Not by just someone who tuned in and said, oh, I heard about this drawing. Let me enter. I might get something free out of it. I mean, great. Something free. <clears throat> That's why. And I know I know, um, uh, everyone's situation is different. So I know you gave away your, your box of cards. and um, But for me personally, I don't like, I don't like to only have one winner in, in my giveaways. I will try to do two and three. Now I'm giving, I've given, um, uh, hold on, <clears throat> uh, Jimmy Guns, Jimmy Guns, I've contacted him several times, I went into his live stream, and I even, he acknowledged my, my um, question for him, about Jimmy, I need your Hey, Alex, how's it going? I need your uh, email address. You need to email me. You can get my email address on my about page, right? Uh, on the about page on my homepage for YouTube. I need you to email me your home address so I can send you your one third place. Hey, thanks, Thundercat, again, for stopping in. I appreciate it. Tomorrow at 7 o'clock, yeah, I'll be opening that box of uh, 92 Fleer. Why not? It's been sitting around here long enough. Cool, Alex. You're a West Coaster, right? Hey, Chris, what's going on? I'm not going to show you, Chris, but I, I came across another uh, Jose Canseco card tonight. So I think we're up to 30. Ah, big country. I thought you're from Georgia. Why you want Pat? I know why you want Pat Nishaks. I know why you want them. I heard you talking about it earlier. I didn't catch all of it. You're a Phillies fan? I thought I saw you wearing a Braves jersey tonight in your video. <laughs> Pat Nishak. Did he ever play for the Braves? I don't know. It's all good. Ready? I'm going to show you something. I'm going to get it. <clears throat> I, I mean, I'm not a, I'm a Yankee fan. All right. We'll get that straight. But even I have a Braves jersey. Let me get it up there. I have Braves jersey. And if you don't like that one, which I'm sure you do, I've got that one. Jabs 2000 Top Stars box opening. So uh, Eric has just came on. Come on. Scott Kingery, okay. Yes, so I know your trick. I know about Pat Nishak um, uh, having taking your stuff to other Phillies players, especially during spring training, and getting uh, getting them assigned for you. Yeah, well, I I until last year, and until the seasons I got hurt, I played I played baseball. I played hardball, wooden bat league in New Jersey, South Jersey. There are a couple wooden bat leagues. I play in one, and um, I played for the team as Marlton Braves, and that was our uniform. And finally, after years of wearing this hot blue jersey, which probably looks black on the screen, but it's blue, um, I convinced them we need to get a white jersey because it is hot as heck in the summertime, and I'm sweating. And 
were all old guys playing a 52 and over division. I turned 60 this year. It's the first year I've, I've voluntarily stopped playing. Um, other times I stopped playing because I joined the military and I was doing military stuff. And then um, I had two, uh, two injuries um, where I, I tore my labrum and my left shoulder. <clears throat> and then um, two, two years ago, I was on, I was on third base. I'm going to give you, here you go. You know, with uh, John Madden and he gives you the old X's and O's, the old chalkboard talk. Well, here we go. We're going to go bam, pow, bang, right? So here's the situation. I'm on base and I get the third base now. Next guy gets up. He's on. So I'm like on second, whatever. He gets a single. I'm on third. Runner on first and third. A lot of teams have this rule. Um, less than two outs. This guy's supposed to steal second. Kind of get try to get caught in a rundown. I'm trying to steal home. I'm gonna go home. Let's pull this up more so we can see. Get a nice illustration going here. I don't have a teleprompter, so I can't just draw on something. You get to see that. I got I got low tech stuff. I got a mat I picked up at the flea market. Plastic mat, but I think it's cool. So I'm on third. He's on first. We look at each other. We kind of give the other the old head nod like, yeah, yeah, we know what's up. So he takes off running. Catcher's got the ball. I got a big, take a big secondary lead. Catcher steps out in front of the plate like he's going to throw the second. So I'm like really hung out. And he turns and wheels and throws the third. So I have to run back. I run back. I slid into the bag with my right arm extended. I hit the bag. My elbow locked. It didn't. It didn't compress. It didn't compress. Is that good? It locked. And I dislocated my shoulder right out the back. Blew it out. Tore the cartilage. Tore the labrum off the bone. Um, done. I'm yelling on the ground, screaming and hollering. I'm in pain. Okay, welcome back, Thunder. I'm yelling. I'm screaming. I'm in pain. Uh, thank goodness we have a... a, a now get the we're, we're old men. The youngest guy on the team is probably 53, 54. And we have a team mom, and she's a nurse. And she come running out, and she's over here, and I'm laying here. They, I'm laying on the ground. I'm getting a face full of dirt, and I'm hyperventilating practically. And so they're like, well, we're going to roll you over. Are you okay? I'm like, yeah, yeah, just do it. And when they rolled me over, it popped back in the socket. The first so that felt good. Pain was gone now. It popped back in socket. Didn't hurt anymore. Then they sit me up. Or actually, they, they sit me up and it popped out the back again. It didn't hurt, but I felt it pop. So when they stood me up, it finally went back in and it stayed in. I put it in a sling, a makeshift sling, and drove my ass to the hospital. <clears throat> Sorry about cursing. And, um, yeah. So that was my second injury, two labrums, one on my left shoulder, one on my right shoulder. I had the gap surgery. I missed the rest of that year. And um, that was the fourth game of the season. So I missed all that year and um, came back last year, played, not this, not this year, last year, and played uh, and did a... Um, you know, did my usual. I'm the leadoff hitter for the team. I'm doing great. I, and uh, it was last year, the year before last was the first year I batted under 400 for the season. Um, but still, and I, <clears throat> when I was when I was younger, and I'm left-handed by the way, but the because of my first shoulder surgery on my labor, I lost I lost a lot of strength in my arm. I used to play third base shortstop as a left-hander you think ah, ah blasphemy blasphemy but i was really good i had a lot of range i didn't like the outfield as a kid you know you're left-handed you got one one or two choices well maybe three you played any of the outfield positions you pitched and you played first base that's it and that's what i did my whole life as a kid but when i became an adult and i wanted to play these other positions people looked at me funny and they still look at me funny when i tell them no i play third base i play shortstop um well, because of the injuries, I couldn't play these positions anymore. I lost a lot of uh, 
strength, arm strength in my throwing arm. So I moved to second base. I'm now, I'm, now I play second base. And it's a way shorter throw, easier to play. But you're hard to get any balls hit to your second base. You still get to turn double plays, but it's really hard because of the pivot you have to do. you got to do a 180 just about all the time. So made it hard. They wouldn't let me pitch that much because I couldn't throw the ball over 60 miles an hour probably. <clears throat> and the first uh, time I threw a knuckleball, I was working on a knuckleball, and a guy hit it for like a 350-foot home run. He just crushed it. A knuckleball that doesn't knuckle. It's like a softball. And I catch. I started catching because the team needed a catcher because our catcher our catcher became uh, our main pitcher. So we had no one to catch. I went out and bought the gear and started catching around the bat. Never caught before, obviously, because lefties don't catch. But I was able to buy the equipment, and I caught. And that's what I did. I love catching, but my arm was not very strong for throwing people out of second base so they could – Kind of steal on me all at once, but you better not try to steal third on me. I'll gun you at third. It's a shorter throw, and I can get them at third. But anyway, that's what I did, and that's where the jerseys came from. I played for these guys for a long time. Um, but back to Pat Neshack now. Pat Neshack does that. And by the way, um, Big Country, uh, are you a member of um, sportscollectors.net? Sportscollectors.net, if you don't know what it is, is a, a website. Now, it costs you $15 a year. Hey, John, how's it going? Sports Collectors, um, yeah, I'm a tough old bastard, Chris. You got that right. Um, Sportscollectors.net, for you guys who don't know, um, is a uh, website. And what they do is they do all TTM stuff there. All sports, golf, tennis, any professional athlete. You can find information on them at this website, and it gives you the statistical chances of getting a return from this any individual. Um, so do you guys know uh, a YouTuber named Matt Antonelli? This guy's on YouTube channel. He's got you know, 125,000 followers. <clears throat> um, well, anyway. He used to play professional ball, right? 2006, he was the number one draft pick for the uh, San Diego Padres. Well, it didn't work out for me. He had injury, and you listen to him. He does. So what he does is he coaches kids up in Massachusetts. He's um, the head baseball instructor at this little thing up there, this uh, complex. Okay. Okay, so they do it for free. So, you, so you've got a resource. That's a... Um, no, A N T O N E L L I Antonelli. Well, anyway, so there's a, there's a guy for you right there, um, and Matt Antonelli, his return rate through this website was only sixty five percent. Well, I was watching his channel one night, a couple of nights ago, and he blurted out to everyone. He had I don't know how many thousand people in his, or hundreds of people in his his live stream. And what he does, he does um, MLB, the show, 19. And he plays that game. And he talks about his experiences as a professional ball player, minor league ball player, and and uh, people he's played with while he's playing this game. And you watch and play the game. A lot of people enjoy watching and play this game. It makes me want to go out and get the game and play it myself. Because I think I can do a better job than him at uh, hitting the ball and, and everything else. But whatever. Um he does TTM, and he blurted out his address to send. And I went, I checked the web address, uh, sportscollectors.net, and on that one, he only had a 65% uh, success rate. So I looked at the addresses that people were sending it to, and they were not sending it to his business address. All right. He blurted out, and he told everyone straight up, send anything you want me to sign, cards, balls, bats, send it to this address. And I'll sign it for you. He actually told me, I did it, I gave him a super chat so he could see me, see who I was, because it was scrolling just like Jabs. His chat uh, was scrolling like Jabs on an auction night, you know. And what Bautista, what Bautista is hard to get. There's Bautista is like a pretty common baseball name anymore.
Okay. I don't have his card either. I got 1.8 million cards in my collection, and I do not have a Matt Antonelli card. So what I did is I went on eBay, and I checked it out. All right? He's got a lot of cards. His autograph card from the main card manufacturer goes anywhere from $12 to $100. And I'm like, well, he wasn't that good of a ball player. Yeah, he was the number one draft pick and all that. Nothing to take anything away from the guy. But he didn't have like a, a, a Hall of Fame career. Why is he? Why is he commanding so much? It's because he's a he's a um, YouTube personality, and that's what got him his cards go for so much now. Okay, so so his 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 um his you his mailing address. Is, you guys got a pencil handy? I'll type it in the chat for you because he put it out there for everyone. So I think it's okay for me to, to help him advertise his TTM stuff. All right, here it goes. Oh, hold on. I missed something. That's what it was. And I spelled that wrong. I mean, I got I to gotta remember to wear my glasses when I'm typing because I, I hit so many typos. It's ridiculous. My wife says I need a new keyboard. but All right, so it's New England Premier. Sportsplex. New England Premier Sportsplex. Right. And we'll hit enter. New England uh, Premier Sportsplex, and it is 199 Newberry Street, and that's in Danvers, D A N V E R S, Massachusetts. And it's zero one nine two three. Mickey Mantle is no longer alive. Mantle is dead. He died in ninety uh nineteen eighty five. I should know that. But that's where you can get Matt Antonelli, but like I said, I had to go on a, uh, on eBay to buy his card. I got lucky. There was one there for a quarter. I bought one unsigned for a quarter. Yeah, I think he died in uh, 1985. Cancer got him. Um, I should know this because I read I read the damn book. Um, now it happens, you know. Time flies by. <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, so his rookie year was like 2006. Padres. He played like parts of eight years in the majors and minors. In 2006 was his first year in the minors. He was promoted to the major leagues in 2008. And, um, you know, played until 2012. So maybe 2013 would be his last card. I don't know what I bought. I just bought the first one that was there, and it was a quarter, and it cost me a dollar for shipping. So when it gets here, I'm sending it off to his uh, his work address. Yeah, he was drafted in 2006 at a uh, um, what what college did he go to? Um, right out of high school, I think he said. And um, yeah, so so I did a super chat with him on his channel, and and it was like. Uh, he, he, I told him what I do, what my YouTube channel was about, and I was looking for subscribers. I think I picked up five subs off of his, uh, off of his channel, off of his followers. And then um, he said to me, he goes, I would love to collab, do a collaboration with, yes, Wake Forest. Thank you, John. Uh, were you one of my subs that I came off of his channel by any chance, John? How many people would know that? You have to be a follower of his. Larry Sheets. Yeesh, I don't know. Yes, okay. Well, thank you. 
Anyway, he said he wanted to maybe do a collaboration with me. So I'm going to, when I send him this card, I'm going to include a letter asking him to, if he wants to collaborate, here's an idea. During his live stream of his, his um, uh, MLB, the show 19, stop, open fan mail, read some fan mail from some people, sign some autographs. Make sure, obviously, he says, oh, here's one from Boomslang. Say who it's from. Give them some advertisement, you know, for their for their stuff. Uh, say, here's Boomslang. And, uh, oh, look at the card he sent me. I'm going to sign that. You send a self, by, by the way, guys, don't forget to send a self-addressed stamp envelope with your cards. So it cost him nothing to get it back to you. That's key. They don't want to spend any money, you know, they're being nice enough to sign it for you. Some guys charge. They got to send them cash too. If who is alive? Oh, uh, Larry Sheets. I don't know. You have to Google that one. Wiki is a good one for that. So if you're sending for for anyone's autograph through the mail, you uh, you should include no no should you have to include a self-addressed stamp envelope. Do not put it in a penny sleeve. Do not put it in a top loader. Because some of these guys will sign your top loader. They'll sign your penny sleeve and not even realize it. You just send a bear card and hope for the best. If you send more than one card, you might want to have to put a uh, non-machinable thing and pay a little extra postage so they don't you know, run it through the machine and cancel it. I've never had that problem. And I've sent some pretty thick cards, and I've sent uh, more than one card. Never had an issue, but I have seen people get their stuff back, and it's been stuck in the machine the machining thing and got pretty well ground up. So uh, Larry Sheets. I mean, the name is definitely sounds familiar. I just can't picture it, uh, the face and the team. But <clears throat> was it Baltimore Orioles maybe? So do that. And he even said so. Guys, send me stuff. I don't care. Just make sure you, yeah, see Baltimore Orioles. Um, uh, send it with the self-addressed stamp envelope. If you're going to send the ball, he said, send him a ball. Bats are a little bit hard to do. You have to include the return postage for that, that tube or include, I wouldn't even include money for, for to have him go ahead and pay for it. You know, have to run to the, to the post office and do it. You know, balls are easy to do because you can include a box, uh, within a box, maybe and have it weighed also at your local post office and then throw it throw that box inside the box and take it back you know uh, i don't know how to do that i don't do baseballs i do cards that's it cards are enough you know they lay flat they store nice and easy um or or you can also do if you don't if you don't have a card of his and i know i'm getting off the track here a little bit but index cards are always good too so in the in the autograph world they would call them flats right uh, or cuts flats or cuts if it's a a, a larger pitcher uh it's a flat if it's a post uh, index card it's a cut send them an index card they'll sign the index card send it back that's all right just include a self-addressed stamp envelope in case you guys don't know what a self-addressed stamp envelope is you put your return address as where it's going to and i always stick a little sticky label with my address on top also so if it turns out like uh yeah we can't find this guy let's send it back but they're going to send it to you anyway you know what i mean you have your address in there twice plus plus as the return address and the to address that's all it'll get back to you Howard Reynolds, okay. So you, you're lucky to get some stuff in five months. I waited three years for Mike Schmidt to send me something back. Uh, and I've seen, you know, if the website that you're on tracks um, all that dates, the date you sent out, like sportscollectors.net, people log in the date they sent it out. Like you keep your little log book. Yeah, Mike Schmidt took me, took three years. You know how I know? Because I joined the Air Force in 1981. I sent it out. I'm in Germany. Three years later, I come back from Germany, and it comes to my house. 
my parents' house because that's where I had, you know, that's where I was living. And all of a sudden it shows up. When I left, that was the address, the return address I had. And I come back and I'm home for like a month because I got reassigned. My new assignment was Las Vegas and I had to go out there, but I had leave. I took a month and next thing you know, it shows up. It took like three years. <clears throat> Mike Schmidt does shows, but he charges $150, at least the one out here and uh, at the Philly show. Uh, the last one, not this past one we had just last week, the one before that, in the middle of summer, he was there and he charged $149. That was just for like a little baseball card size, and then everything went up from there, and price went up. <laughs> Spare Acuna rookies. Yeah, good luck there. Unfortunately, big country. Someone might. There are guys who collect them and have a bunch of them. I'm not. I bought one. Uh, I don't think it was an Acuna Jr. or is it Albies? I might have an Acuna. Um, I bought one, and I. It was slabbed. Yeah, it wasn't even Acuna Jr. It was uh, Ozzy Albies. So I bought this thinking, you know, it's a Gem Mint 10 because it says, it says Gem Mint 10 right there, right? It's a 2018 Tops opening day mint. Ozzy Albies, rookie card number 113, Gem Mint 10, right? And the advertisement said it's a um, first graded, first graded Gem Mint 10. I'm thinking, wow, this is like one of the first ones. First ones out of the factory, and then it's a Gem Mint 10. No, first graded, first graded is the name of the company. Some guy started his own company and decided he's going to stick this in there and he's going to sell them as Gem Mint 10s. So, yeah, little did I know. That was silly because I'm looking at it now. It looks like that corner is a little smushed right there. It's hard to see because it's probably not going to focus very well. It looks like that corner is smushed to begin with. So I... I I didn't pay a ton of money for it, thank God, but I thought I was getting a good deal. And buyer beware, right? It's eBay, and people do stuff to you. you just got to be buyer beware. Only buy from reputable sellers. That's all I can tell you. <clears throat> but we learn by our, our mistakes, hopefully. We don't repeat the mistakes. Hey, Preston Sports, how's it going? You're 12. Wow. Uh, well, Big Country's pretty pretty young. At least his brother is anyway. His brother was in his video tonight. I don't know if his brother's 12 or 13 or not, but sounds young. Okay. All right, so he'd be 17 in October. Well, there you go. Now your brother's 14. Okay. Yeah, um, no, I'm old enough to be a lot of people's father around here. I'm sure I'm not, uh, I think Donald Blumbell's older than me, um, so. Big Country is a Braves fan, yes he is. Uh, Preston, I got 20 years on you. Sports car junkie, you got three packages coming? What, like a fan mail thing or from eBay stuff? I used, earlier in the year, um, you're 31. You're, you're my a little bit younger than my my sons. My sons are like 34 and 35, 34 and 36 now. They're they're 18 months apart. Yeah, you just said you were 12. That's so why I was trying to see if Big Country was younger than you because 
big country sounds young. I, I saw his picture, his picture of his brother. His brother is definitely a young kid, too. I mean, not a little kid, but... Um, yeah, guys, don't forget to sub each other up around here. Let's help each other out. Let's help each help, help everyone grow their channel. Um, big country just hit... Uh, over 200 it's closing on 250 and um thundercat is looking for subs guys hit him up uh he's got a long way to go but we can get him there tonight with i know we only have eight people on the channel but chat but you never know Sports guard junkie it's this oh yeah that's that's i you know ronnie your name confuses me i keep looking for something like ronnie anymore Guys, Ronnie is one of the guys that are in, it's in uh, one or two of my videos uh, up at the Columbus Flea Market. He sells stuff um, for um, blaster boxes and, and uh, relic autograph cards. He sells them. He's a, um, he's a vendor up there. And I ran into him, and he decided he was going to start his own channel. So sub him up, guys. Help him get going. Um, and he sells this stuff for a living. So, I mean... You get him going, he might be able to do, you know, some live auctions and stuff like that. Uh, Ronnie, do you uh, have you watched the Jabs auctions that uh, happened the other day? Live auctions? Yes, I know, Ronnie. Your your sports car junkie throws me. I'm used to just calling you Ronnie. Pat Neshacks. Yeah, so big country is looking for Pat Neshacks. And the deal with Pat Neshack is he'll sign a card for you, and all he wants from you is one of his cards in return. So if you send him a Pat Neshack card, he will sign one for you as well. Send him two. Let him keep one. He'll sign one. Send him three. He'll keep. Let him keep one. He'll sign one. And I know during spring training, I don't know so much during the season. He's hurt right now, by the way, uh, Big Country. I think he's hurt. Um during spring training for the Phillies, he, uh, now there's a fee involved with this and he's actually a member of sportscollectors.net. So I don't know a big country if he's on yours or not either, but he is a member of sportscollectors.net and he puts it out there on there that he will do this for people and he lists the prices that people charge and people will send him their stuff, bats, balls, flats, and, um, with the money now these guys don't like uh don't like checks they want cash because there's no paper trail um that um he will get them signed to you and get them back to you all going through pat neshack so you don't have to contact the individual players pat does that for you know fans and if you have an extra pat neshack card send it to him so he can add it to his collection and or sign it and give it to you know kids or whatever he does with them he may he may sign them for kids in the hospital and and when he goes visit the hospital for kids with cancer or whatnot he may have the, all these cards ready to give out to the kids i don't know what he does with them i've never dealt with him but i i i heard people talking about him uh, on sportscollectors.net and i know that that's what he does on the side besides from being a major league pitcher for the philadelphia phillies he does that so he's gonna he gets kingery for free well that's that's nice of him if, if some guys don't charge maybe some guys don't charge but some of the big guys they'll probably charge him like um um uh, Reese Hoskins probably charges some money. Uh, Aaron Nola probably charges money. Um, Andrew McCutcheon might charge. It, it could be, a, and it might be a substantial amount. Why do I just get fucking set on the shit? So you're five from 50 subscribers? Uh, so guys, if you got time, you want to go sub up uh, Sports Car Junkie. He's five away from 50. 
Don't forget about uh, Thundercat. He's looking for subs. Help each other out. Sub each other up, guys. That's, I mean, that's what we're, we're about, too, is helping each other grow our channels. Um, just remember to sub them up. Go back. Watch some of the videos. Um, throw down the thumbs up. You know, click that like button. Even click notification bells if you like what you're seeing. If not, at least give them a comment. Any kind of comment, really. Hopefully a favorable one. And um, that helps the algorithms for them and for you. Because if you don't do that, if you don't go back after a while and sub to them, you will be automatically unsubbed from their channel. I don't know how many times um, I see my numbers go up. And not just me, other guys see it too. Mine are only small numbers. Three and four uh, subscribers drop off the very next day because people subscribe and then they actually they don't return. And so I, those subscribers are automatically unsubscribed from me. They're like, well, this guy really doesn't watch your stuff. So they, being YouTube, their, their programs are set up to catch certain things and you get unsubscribed. I was unsubscribed from Don Blumdahl, you know, early on. Uh, I was unsubscribed from Jabs early on. So, yeah, um, Sports Card Junkie, he sells a lot of his stuff. So, you know, you may be able to buy something off of him uh, at a decent price. Uh, I have videos of it. Uh, he sold me a bunch of uh, uh, autographs and, and relics along with some blaster boxes. So, Yeah, go, just go check each other out. Um, Thundercat, you're still here? Did you have school tomorrow? Both of you guys from the from the East Coast. I, I'm just I'm not trying to chase you away, but I know what it's like, man. I was up late last night, kind of like I am now, uh, and uh, man, I couldn't get off for work. I was late for work like two days this week because I was up streaming uh, late, trying to help. Get the guys on the West Coast, help get them to come onto the channel and get used to the channel. That's why Eric goes on later and later. Have you guys noticed that? He used to come on early, and now he's later and later because he wants to be all-inclusive. He wants to include uh, the West Coasters uh, because, you know, I don't know what they have going on out there. Uh, I am subscribed to a ton of people, but, you know. <clears throat> Yeah, so Big Country, catch you later. Um, Ronnie, you see that? Uh, big Country's got his email. It's in, actually, it's in the bottom of his one of his videos, too. It's on his, um, probably on his about page, too. But he has it listed. I did see it there tonight when I was in watching. Uh, by the way, he's, he posted, he's the winner. Big Country Wheelhouse is the winner of my 500 subscriber giveaway. And he, he posted an unboxing of everything that I sent him. So, guys, you can go check him out. Check out that video. And he's gonna he's gonna produce other videos from what I send him because he's got a whole bunch of stuff that I gave him. And as soon as I hit 750, guys, as soon as I hit 750, um, I'm having my 750 giveaway. The video is up. It's been up for over a week now. I am currently sitting at 751. Refresh. Refresh, waiting for it to refresh, slow refresh. 751, or I'm sorry, 651. Yeah, I wish it was 751. I had my giveaway. So I'm at 651. I'm 99 away from my next milestone and giveaway. I couldn't tell you how many home runs Mike Trout hit. I know he hit a lot this year. It's his all-time high. I don't think he's been over 30 in the first two years. I could be wrong, but he definitely hadn't hit 40 until this year. And he's he's hurt. I think he's out for the rest of the season now, he said. Yeah, which stinks. I don't know how that will affect his 
a chance at MVP because, I mean, really, <clears throat> his numbers are there, you know, and they're good enough. Just like Yelich's numbers are there. But Yelich has got a lot of competition. Bellinger has been right there with him all year long. And Bellinger has a higher batting average, I think, than Yelich. So, I don't know who's going to get it in the National League. And who's going to get it in the American League. Rookie of the Year is probably going to go to Alonzo just because it's going to turn into a popularity thing. And, you know. Yeah, he had, he had nerve issues, but it might be a, a spur or something, too. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, Bregman's been there close every year, right, since he's been in the league. He's a, And he's a small guy. He's not a really big guy. Like, Trout's not huge either, but Trout is just stocky. He's beefy. He's got meat on his bones where Bregman can probably do a lot, a lot more than, uh, uh, has more flexibility than Trout, I bet. Trout really beefed up. So uh, Bregman's got 45 this year. I'd be testing him for PEDs. What are you talking about, Mike Trout? Okay, so Trout. Well, you know, Trout uh, was under investigation by the, from what I heard. I don't have any first-hand knowledge, so this becomes hearsay, which is more than second-hand knowledge, it's third-hand knowledge. Uh, so the legal term is hearsay. I'm not a lawyer, but I have studied constitutional law. Um, and that um, when it becomes, you heard it from someone else who heard it from someone else, it becomes third-party hearsay. And um, he um, is under investigation for kind of PEDs. He's, he and Harper have been uh, promoting this uh, product. Let's put it this way. Like something you can buy out of the gas station. You know, like a five-hour energy type drink, I guess. I don't know. Um, and the ball is juice, too. Yes. Um, but he's been he's been under investigation. I haven't heard anything. I, I don't think they've concluded their investigation. Maybe they're waiting for some kind of test to come back. Maybe they're going to test him at the end of the season. I don't know. I don't know how they determine how they're just going to test someone. It's supposed to be random, right? <laughs> yeah, I hear you, Preston. It's... Yeah, the league did that, not the players. The pitchers hate it. Um, batters love it. Yeah, look at, I mean, I'm a Yankee fan. Look at all the Yankees that are hitting home runs. Uh, look at Houston. Houston has what? Four or five guys that are over 30 home runs, right? That's Houston. <clears throat> Aaron Judge is having an off year because he had he had uh, injuries, um, so he's not having 50. It's not a 50 home run season for him. Yeah, the commissioner is going to deny it, of course, because he's directly involved in it. And so if he cheats, if he cheats, and let's go back then to the Barry Bonds and, and all those PEDs, the Mark McGuire's, the Sammy Sosa's, uh, the Rafael Palmeros, um, all those guys that were juicing, even the pitchers like Clemens and, and uh, you know, guys that were thinking it was him. And it, and it probably did help a little bit. I mean, they could obviously they could always hit the ball. And here's, here's a good example, all right? So um, you all know that Mark uh, uh, Jose Canseco has got a twin brother, Ozzy Canseco. They're identical twins. They should have the same, almost the same exact genomes, right? Their genes are the same. Their fingerprints will be different because no one has the exact same fingerprints. I have an identical twin brother myself. So... Um, you would think we were, we were the same, right? But when you look at the Consecos, they look the same. They've both been juicing, right? They're just big guys, right? They juice. But Ozzy never made it in the major leagues. He couldn't hit the ball for a lick to save his life. 
So the, you, there is still some amount of skill there, you know, where Jose just had a natural gift and he enhanced it through, you know, PEDs, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, and, and you know what? Here's what I have to say. If those guys get in, if those the Bonds gets in, if uh, McGuire gets in, Sosa will never get in. He never had the numbers. Um, Palmero should be in. He's got. The, he's a member of the 500 Home Run Club. Um, then Pete Rowe should be in. Shooter Joe Jackson should be in. Then let's just pew, wipe the slate clean for everybody. I mean, they've already lowered the bar. Nothing for nothing. Like I. I'm not personal friends with with Harold Baines. I don't know all that much about him, but I'm pretty sure he didn't have Hall of Fame numbers. Yet he's in the Hall of Fame. Lee Smith, on the other fan, other hand, when he retired, he was the number one relief pitcher in baseball. He retired. He had all the records. Guys that came after him broke his records. That's all. So he belonged in the Hall of Fame probably a long time ago. Um, you know, he made it eventually, yeah, but it's like, you know, the, the Veterans Committee had to put him in. Harold Baines, Veterans Committee put him in. Well, a lot of people don't know that because they weren't around during then. The older people, you know that. He was a good pitcher, too. He wasn't no, you know, no, no schlep pitcher. He was a very good pitcher. Rose, first off, hindsight being what it is. Um, I don't know if your parents have ever told you this. Don't sign anything. Don't admit to anything. If the police pull you over, don't sign anything. All right, Alex, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Um, yeah, go back and watch the beginning of the video. We opened up a box of... Uh, <clears throat> Omega, which is a, uh, a, a Pacific product. We did get uh, a couple of the chase cards out of it, but, you know, we did get a junior, Griffey Jr. out of it. We got a Jeter base, but that's it. Um, you read whose book? Canseco's book? Or Rose's book. Of course, yeah, he didn't want Rose in for whatever reason. But if you ever been to the, to the Cooperstown, to the Hall of Fame, Pete Rose's likeness is there. His name is not mentioned. But he is there as part of the Big Red Machine. You'll see pictures of him there, um, along with like the Johnny Benches and, and, and the Joe Morgans and all that stuff. His pictures there. When I went there, and I want to say it was one of the years that the Yankees won '96 or '98. Um, we went up there. We drove up to New York. It wasn't that far because we live here in Jersey. It was, it was a couple hour drive, but we went up there, and yeah, he should have never, never admit to anything, never sign anything. Make sure you have a lawyer. That's just you know, um, he admitted to it for what reason? I don't know. Maybe they promised him. A, a 10 year ban or, or a 20 year ban, but he got a lifetime ban anyway out of it. So, yeah, if you know you're getting a lifetime ban, what else were they going to do to him? What else are we going to do? Try to prosecute him? For what? Gambling? What are you going to do? Um, they're, not, they're never going to apologize to him. I went and I saw Pete Rose this past weekend. Um, unfortunately, my my spy cameras, I turned it off instead of turned it on, I guess. Never turned it on when I was up there talking to him. <clears throat> so, I have no footage of it. All right, Thundercat, you better go to bed because you got work and uh, you got school in a couple hours. So, you better get some sleep. Yeah, I mean, but to see him today, I did get some still photos of him. Uh, 
he's no longer Charlie Hustle, that's for sure. He's about as round as he is uh, tall now. Not that he was ever tall, but he's taller than me. Um, but he's he's about around, and he walks. He's got a limp now. He walks with a limp. And a couple months ago, he put it out that he was having some health scares and stuff like that. Well, yeah, Pete, you're like 300 pounds almost. <clears throat> so, and. Yeah, there was three members of the Big Red Machine there this past weekend signing autographs. Tony Perez, Joe Morgan, Pete Rose. Pete Rose had the biggest line of people wanting stuff from him. Uh, Morgan and, and Perez, they had lines too. I got there and I was like 10 minutes after the place opened up. So I got my ticket and I'm number 34 to get... Um, Um, to get his autograph, was number 34. Uh, well, working for casinos is tricky. It's tricky. Yeah. There's a lot of guys who work for casinos that have to walk a fine line, um, when you're promoting the casino. But Mano did a lot of that. That's how they made money, guys. They made, they didn't make any money. Mano made, as one of the top guys, it was like a hundred grand, um, a year, you know, for being one of the top. I, I went, I read, um, <clears throat> I'm going to do some promoting here for, and this is a non-paid promotion, guys, but um, as soon as I find it, Bobby Richardson. By the way, Bobby Richardson does TTM. Um, you guys are still here to do TTM. I know Thundercat probably just left. Um, I don't know if um, Big Country's still here or not. Bobby Richardson does TTM through the mail stuff. I corresponded with him throughout the summer. Um, I bought his book. That's not a real signature. Though. That's a facsimile. I bought his book. It's called Impact Player. And he's a Christian. He's born. He's a Christian. So it's, uh, obviously it talks a lot about religion in here and his, his relationship with God. But he... he uh, he signed inside the cover for me, which is really nice of him, right? Has a beautiful signature. And his Yankees from 55 to 66. And I read this book from cover to cover. And he talks in here about, um, and he sent some other stuff. He's got these, um, uh, I forget what they call them. Um, but he hands out the, um, the little religious pamphlets. God, I forget what they call them. Tracks. They call them tracks. If any of you guys are religious, then you know what I'm talking about. Um, tracks. So he hands out tracks. And, and I told him, I said, listen, my, my name is Mickey. And that's my real name. I said, my father named me after Mickey Mantle. That's how I introduced myself to him. I said, um, I would really love to come down and talk baseball with you sometime. And would you mind signing these um, these cards for me, too? And I paid him like $5 for each autograph. Cash. I always uh, get the self-addressed return envelope. So he would sign them and send them back. And then he offered me uh, his book. He said he'll sell me his book. And he'll sell it to me for 10 bucks. It sells like for 25 bucks normally. Except for 10 bucks, uh, And uh, I'll sell you my book. So I wrote him back. I said, I'll take a copy of your book if you sign it. Autograph it inside for me. Um, now some at hindsight people saying if it wasn't personalized, it would be worth more. But I don't care. To me, I want that personalized touch. So I'm not going to sell this book. I'm never going to sell this book. Um, and he talks about in this book a lot about Mickey Mantle, about his life and his relationship with with Christ and, and all this stuff. And again, I I, I promise I wouldn't talk about religion, and I'm not. I'm not. That's his story. So, but the story I'm getting to is he does TTM. He does through the mail. And he's a really nice guy. He's in his 80s, by the way, guys. So thanks, Preston. Um, so this summer, I went down to South Carolina. I told him I was going to come down. He told me in a return letter, he says, you're welcome to come down. We'll have lunch. I, I, I got that letter. It's in a box somewhere. I should have left it in, in the book, but I have it in, a, in the envelope and in a box because it came separate from the book. I said, come on down. We'll have lunch. I'm thinking, 
man, I can't believe my luck. I'm going to actually be able to interview Bobby Richardson, who is he's not a top-notch star. He was an average ball player, but he played with some of the best ball players of his era. He played with Mickey Mantle, Roger Maris, Yogi Berra, you know. Um, Casey Stengel was his coach for a while, and then Yogi became the man. Or Casey Stengel was the manager, then Yogi Berra was a manager for a year or two. And then Ralph Houck was his minor league uh, manager and became his uh, major league manager, I think, for a year or so, too. Um, uh, let's see, who else? Um, Tony Kubek. He's good friends with Tony Kubek. Um, all those guys. All those. I mean, he knew all those good Yankees from all those good World Series, World Championship years, right? Um, anyway, he talks about all that in his book, but he said in his book he has a paragraph in there. He right? covers like he's on vacation for three months out of the year and goes to his summer home. Well, I went down there during his summer vacation, so I wasn't able to meet up with him. God, I would love to have met up uh, and had that discussion, had lunch, done an interview for for my channel and, and help promote him. And, and obviously, because his his mission in life now is to spread the word of God more. And, and so that would be on my channel. Of whatever his word, whatever he says, I would not edit anything out. It would come directly from him. And um, But he spoke at Mickey Mantle's eulogy. Mickey Mantle, when Mickey Mantle was dying in the hospital in Texas, he called Bobby Richardson to come out. And finally, you know, Mano was known as a carouser and a, uh, a drinker and all this good stuff. I think everyone knows all about that, that part of his story. There's other stuff, though, that we don't know about that he does know about. And he talks about it in his book. <clears throat> so if you want uh, some, there's some really good reading in some parts of that, that book. Uh, I'm not going to lie and say all of it's good reading, but there's some really nice stuff. If you're a Yankee fan, it's a good read. Um, but anyway, um, he was Mickey Mantle called to him and his wife, and they came out to Texas to kind of talk with Mickey. And Mickey um, was like, finally accepted God into his life. And guys, I'm not promoting religion. I don't want to do that. That's not what my channel is about. Um, I let people make up their own mind about religion. People are atheists, they're atheists, whatever. I myself do believe there's a God. I just don't go to church, you know. On a regular, any on any basis, but that doesn't mean they don't believe that there's maybe a higher spirit that may be controlling things. But anyway, uh, I don't talk about politics, uh, but the, I'm talking about this book and the contents of this book. And so he went out there and Mickey um, accepted God, and it's in the book, and he talked about it. And finally, Mickey was able to, you know, when Mickey finally did pass away, that at least Bobby knew that, you know. Mickey came to terms, number one, with his illness, and number one, that he was not a good a good father to to his family and his sons and stuff like that, and he could have should have been better, and um, that he accepted God, and then he passed away, and then he gave the eulogy, and, and you can look it up on on YouTube, uh, Mickey Mantle Mantle's eulogy, um, Bob Costas has a big part in it, you know, uh, Bobby Richardson gives the uh, the eulogy and then Bob, other people come up and just talk about, you know, about Mickey Mantle and their relationship with Mantle. Costas has done probably numerous of interviews of Mantle while he was alive. So uh, that's all YouTube. You can Google that stuff. You can find it on YouTube. It's all interesting. If you're a Mantle fan, which I am, I've seen a lot of that stuff. And that intrigues me because, uh, again, my relationship <clears throat> is only through my father who named me after Mantle, but that's how I got started, and that's where I am today. That's why I'm I'm still a Mickey Mantle fan, you know, till the day I die. So, and I'll be a Yankee fan. My father was a Yankee fan. My family, on the other hand, are all Phillies fans, but that's a different story. But anyway, that's, that's the book, and I'm very, very happy to have gotten that from Bobby Richardson, and uh, I hope he lives a long life. I know we have some new people in the channel. So since we're back on the topic of Mickey Mantle, and I showed this earlier, but some of you guys may not have seen this. I bought this at the market. And I think I paid three or five bucks for it. And it's got, you know, some Mantle cards in here. 
but this is like the complete set, which is nice. I've seen like loose cards of these laying around in boxes and stuff, and I don't know what these are. I have, I have not taken anything out of here. I've not touched anything. I let everything the way it is, um, as the way I bought it. This is a record, by the way. It's a it's a 33 RPM, but it has never been played. It's still got the the hole in the center for the uh, you know, for putting the the, uh, the record on the record player is still intact. Never been played, never been used. This is how I bought it. Very nice. I like it. I like it a lot. For you guys that are coming in late, 7 p.m. Eastern uh, Eastern time tomorrow, I'm going to break this baby open. I'm going to see what we can find, see what goodies we can find in here. I don't know. Also, I'm working on Patreon, so I keep saying that, but I... I spend so much time doing other things in work, uh, my grandkids, um, other obligations here at home. Uh, this is one of the last things I get to do at the end of the day. Um, but I enjoy doing it. But I, I'm going to be – I keep talking. But I will get a Patreon thing set up. I've already had it set up in the tiers. I just actually have to maybe put a link on my YouTube channel to send you there. If anyone's interested, and it's just something real small three, five, seven, and ten. That's it. And I'm only doing ten of each for now because I don't want to get overwhelmed um, and become too much obligated because right now I'm not even prepared to do all that um, 100%. I do have an idea of what I want to give away to Patreons, um, but. You know, it's just a, a thing. I have other things I want to do on the channel. I want to give away complete sets of cards. They're going to be, they will be hand collated, but they're going to be some nice ones. Right now I've got some uh, 1984 tops that I bought off of a guy. Again, I, I, and I'm, I don't get paid to promote Facebook Marketplace, guys, but in your local area, you can go out 100 miles uh, from your your home location or wherever you want to set your pinpoint at and in a hundred mile radius um, find people who are selling stuff on Facebook marketplace and you can find some good stuff um, I find a lot of stuff that way a lot of my bulk sales came from that my last sale if you saw my last um, um, purchase of the last lot was ended up was 200,000 advertised ended up be 210 but here's here's one set 1984 tops that I'm, I'm gonna be giving away it's hand collated but it's all here and the guy was nice enough to even pull out the Mattingly so you can see the Mattingly rookie card I've actually got um, four of them so I'll be giving away some of them and I'll be keeping at least uh, one for myself and um, so that's just something. I, I mean, there's a – so to start a YouTube channel, there is a small investment that you're probably going to have to make. All right. I'm fortunate enough that I've got a lot of a lot of uh, inventory stuff. I have a lot of packs of cards. I've got – if I don't sell my cards on, on um, eBay, the kits that I've set up, and then I have not sold them one yet on ebay and that's my choice i have not opened an ebay store um randomly this is what it was going to be i may just end up giving these like uh breaking these back down and giving packs to patrons and stuff like that but this is an idea of one of the kits and i'm just calling them kits because this is what i was including for randomly rack packs i have random rack packs of different years um, these little little cards a random autograph was going in with every box that I sold and then these are just these are just look at the, the quick look at the packs that I was including you know um, with it the, the, the thing was it's going to be a minimum of 200 cards no repeat packs however you might get like a rack pack that's 87. Uh, tops and you might get an 87 this is an 87 but you might get an 87 wax pack different things come in in the rack packs you get these all-star cards that you don't get in the regular packs stuff like that that's all everything is um, freshly opened up 
Some of the stuff is fresh from cases that I bought. I still have cases of rack packs. I have cases of, uh, of boxes of cards that I haven't opened yet. Um, and the whole idea was to buy this stuff and open up my eBay store. But if I go ahead with this Patreon thing, this is something I may just be using for Patreon gives away and give away on my channel, especially if I start growing uh, and getting a little bit larger. So that's what's going on with the channel so far. Um, a whole lot of nothing, actually, but could be. Let's put it that way. I could be um, growing. I'm just, I'm going, I'm choosing to go slow and not become overwhelmed by anything. Um, so that I'm in, I'm in control and I'm not losing control of everything around me, you know, like, uh, an auction that <clears throat> is moving so fast that you can't keep up with what's going on, uh, where you need to hire more people to help you. Uh, let's see, really like the 72 as well. So, so if you guys go to, um, Big Country's uh, wheelhouse. I sent him as part of that 500 subscriber giveaway a 1972 rack pack, um, holiday rack pack. So what the holiday rack packs are is it's a repack. So Tops sold some of the cards or someone bought a bunch of their cards. Yes, Ronnie, sports card junkie. Ronnie just started his channel up, guys. So. Um, Guys, go sub him up, sub each other up. Again, I'll keep saying that. Help each other out, help promote each other. Um, but um, uh, holiday rack packs, and the only way to tell if they're the real holiday rack packs is they have to have that candy cane uh, design on the back. I've seen them without the candy cane design, but the same, they like the, the stocking handle on the top, the Christmas handle on the top. Supposedly, they're not legitimate that's what i heard they're not legitimate holiday ones they're repacks from someone else somewhere else i don't know Fifteen hour marathon break just rack packs and cellos and regular packs from 81 to 89 500 packs in a row nice Repack uh, video will be up soon, or the recap video. Cool. So how many hours was that? A 15 hours? Like, did you stay up that whole time, or did someone else fill in for you? Because you said we. Like, did your wife or kids help you at all? I mean, that would be great to do something like that. Um. I know the Jabs boys have stayed up really late doing breaks and stuff like that, but that's high-end stuff that they're doing. So um, I, I've i included, um, I believe I've included some 72 um, rack packs in the next, in my 750 subscriber giveaway. Now, on these, these holiday repacks, there's only 12 cards per pack. So you're not getting like, 30 40 cards that would be great but for those 12 cards it cost you 30 40 bucks off of ebay is where i bought them so they're um a little pricey but i i grew up on that's when i first started in the 72 design i love the 72 design and um yeah i mean that's my favorite of all the cards i love the shiny stuff too but i mean sometimes it's our first real exposure i mean I've seen other cards before that because my brothers were card collectors, uh, and that's kind of how I got started. I have older brothers, and they were doing it, and so you know I don't want to be left out. <clears throat> yeah, I know a lot of the shiny is a lot of people make little jokes about ooh the shiny, the shiny, the shinies, and the autographs are like really you're paying a lot of money for maybe a good autograph. You may be getting, you know, Ryan O'Hearns or someone like that for your hundred or two hundred dollars too. So if I'm gonna spend that kind of money, I'm gonna buy it certified off of eBay and guaranteed that that's what I'm getting. 
I know I'm getting that Derek Jeter. I know I'm getting that whatever, that Ty Cobb cut. That'd be a nice one to add to my collection. Of Ty Cobb, but they're so expensive. Oh, by the way, I, uh, my son was born. <clears throat> My youngest son was born around the same time Pete Rose was breaking all the, the hit the hit records, or shortly after he broke it. <clears throat> so I named I named my son after Ty Cobb, not Pete Rose. But so my son's name is Ty, just T Y. And uh, but yeah, he doesn't follow baseball anymore. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah, I you know what. Uh, NASCAR fans, you know who is um, Ronnie is um, Danny and Gray's Cards and Toys. Now he's having an auction tomorrow too. He's having a live auction, so if you guys are NASCAR fans, you might want to go uh, check that out. I think he's having a live auction. He said tomorrow, and I tune in and listen. If you're a NASCAR fan, I, I talked to him about your uh, Daryl Waltrip. Um, photo you had there signed Daryl Waltrip uh, and you had another one but Waltrip ones that uh, I talked to him about because I asked him if he had a Waltrip turns out he has just about everybody um, well he had on his background tonight a poster that he got off of a uh, like a garage wall he said and they he asked for it and they gave it to him and he took that around and got it signed by I don't know there might have been 50 guys there he probably had 45 of the guys signed it for him including Dale Jr um jeff gordon danica patrick and a whole bunch of other ones like i'm not a big nascar but those are some of the names that the non-nascar guy you hear about you know because they're in the news or whatever exactly john that's why number one i can't afford to get into that listen i'll spend four hundred dollars for two hundred thousand cards though You have Dale Earnhardt. Was that Dale Hart and Earnhardt there that weekend that I was up there and saw the uh, Waltrip uh, card there? Like I think they call them um, their cards, but they're, they're I forget what they call those cards. I should know because my cousin my cousin is a, a race car driver and he drives Indy cars. He, he used to um, he used to drive for Andretti when he was coming up through the ranks. And then he rode a couple years for Ganassi, Chip Ganassi. Uh, he's done I think, five or six Indy 500s now. Um, and the last couple of years, all he's been doing is Indy 500 for IndyCar. But he drove um, IMSA for Lexus two years ago. Um, and he's driving this year for his Indy sponsor, Wix Filters. They do rally. He's doing rally car stuff now. So, I mean, and he's like... God, he's, he started Indy when Indy car driving he was like 19. He was going to the senior prom. He had he had a senior prom, I guess, at the uh, in Indianapolis instead of at his high school in uh, Nazareth. Nazareth, PA, is where it's from. Oh, Dale Senior. I don't know if he has that. You're gonna have to um, go check him out. That's all I can tell you. I'm sure he'd be interested in it. Now, I can tell you this much is, is um, he'd rather trade because I don't, you know, a lot of people don't have a lot of money and they do a lot of horse trading around here. Just so you know, um, that I think he would prefer to trade you something for it. That's all I'm saying. Um, a lot of people do trading though. Cards. Because there are guys who collect certain cards and then there are guys who um, don't care about the, the Lindors or whatever. And they'll give you a trade you a Lindor for the guy that they're collecting. I'm surprised. Like I've, I've never, um, until recently on, on here when I really became aware of uh, this community, seen people who collect just one guy. Like, oh, I just collect one team or I just collect Kensekos, say. Like um, Mr. Bolton, if he's still here, and he's probably not. But Chris is a Canseco guy, and there's a couple other Canseco guys that, I mean, there are guys who obviously collect bigger names, but 
and Seiko is one that comes to mind. Check them out then. That's all I'm going to tell you. Danny and Gray, uh, Cards and Toys. Um, I believe he lives in North Carolina, so he's going to have an accent. <laughs> he says we have accents. Someone said I had a Jersey accent. Do I have a Jersey accent? I don't think so. I'm not from Jersey, especially North Jersey. Thank you. I know Jersey accents, and I know Philly accents, too. I work around a lot of people from Philly, and I live in New Jersey, and I don't have that. And I'm from, I'm from PA, but I'm from uh, near the Poconos originally. All right. It's 11.42, guys. I'm going to hang around for a couple more, maybe maybe 12 o'clock. But I got a call. I got to pull a plug sooner or later. My wife's been bugging me. She has something to ask me. And I don't know. She just comes coming in and, and looking at me. And she's just mouthing the word, are you busy? Are you? <laughs> so I'm going to have to pull a plug. She's real quiet right now. I don't know if she even went to bed. Let me go check real quick. Oh no, she didn't go to bed. So my my wife and I used to do this too. I was I was okay. I gotta get up. I gotta get up at four thirty a.m. Be out of the house by five. Be to work before six. I start work at six a.m. and get off at two thirty. And thank God tomorrow's Friday. Uh, Sunday, I don't know. Um, I know I'm running out of time. What time, do, when do they shut down, like, for the season, the outdoor stuff? They have an actual drop-dead date up there, Ronnie? So I just don't know what my wife has planned for me. I know I just dropped 400 bucks on a 210,000-card lot, and that, that, May have tweaked her a little bit. Yeah, the indoor, but I'm talking outdoor. Outdoor's got to shut down sooner or later. I mean, as soon as the snow starts flying. There's people outside all year round. I mean, this is my first year back there in, in I don't know how many years. Really, I just, yeah, but I, I don't know... There's going to be a lot of vendors up there. Huh? That's my concern. And especially guys that are going to be, other than you, you deal in the newer stuff. And I go up there, I look for some older stuff too, Ron. I look for guys that have the binders for sale. And that's what, um, you don't do the winter. But you can sell out of your house, because I, I, I know what town you live in now. I don't know where you live, but I've seen your advertisement on Facebook Marketplace. So I know what town you live in. It's still a little bit of a hike for me. I used to live up in Palmyra. So that was a heck of a lot closer than what I am now to you. But you could probably sell stuff Oh, you live in Palmar. I thought it was I thought you were listed as a Beverly. Your thing on Facebook said Beverly. Because Palmyra is next to Riverton and Riverside is and then on the south side is Pensalkin. And Taconi's across the bridge in PA. Oh, you listed your all right, because it said Be it gave a Beverly uh, thing. All right. Did I ever meet her? She was there, but I think she was. One time I was there, you were talking to her on the phone. I don't think she was there. I didn't get to meet her. She in the business with you, too? She on board with you selling your stuff, your wares? She must be. She goes to the flea market with you, right?
See, Ronnie, I'm going to tell you how you can go live. And anybody still out there listening. So the way I do it, because I don't have a thousand subscribers. I don't have um, uh, the, the hours viewed. But I learned you can use Google Chrome or there are other ones you could use. Just the easiest one for me is Google Chrome. And I got a web camera that has auto zoom. The first one I had didn't have auto zoom and it stunk. So I spent like $45 for the web camera and just logged on to my YouTube account using Google Chrome because Internet Explorer and YouTube, I don't know. I don't know how they block it that way, but they're not blocking it on Google Chrome. So I, I'm right now I'm, I'm using Google Chrome to go live. Now you still can't use your phone for some reason. There's apps you got to put on your phone to get around that. And there are people out here in the community that know how to do all that. I think, John, you were in the uh, room with us when we were talking about that um, earlier tonight. I don't know if you were or not. But so there are there are some apps that you can get to run your phone. I would love to be able to stream the flea market, Ronnie. I'm on my phone i just be like walk around and let people see everything that i'm looking at half the time i forget to turn my phone on or my camera on um okay maybe you weren't there maybe you weren't there john um who was there with this um i have to scroll back because he was in here tonight it was It's way back here. I'm looking, I'm looking. Oh, I can only go back so far. I can't even go back far enough, so. He's been probably out of the chat for a while. Who else there? I still see four people in here. I know uh, Ronnie's here. Um, John's still here. Who else is here? Don't be bashful. Sports card junkie. Funny story with it. She watched me at the flea market. I bought about $500 worth of cards on Saturday. She gave me the look. Until the next day when I sold most of it. The next day she was like, okay. Yeah, that's good if you can flip it right away, right? But see, you're in that business. I'm not in I'm not in that flipping business. Like I I buy what I like and I hold on to it. You know, the stuff I give away uh, is stuff obviously I haven't developed a, any kind of a attachment to for my giveaways. It's stuff that I've I've bought off of eBay. It's stuff that um, I won in auction lots. My wife has been giving me the look to, after this, before this last one. It was like we were discussing the card show and the casinos upstairs. I'm like, honey, we can go. You're going to go to the casino. I'm going to go downstairs. Just the question is, how much money are we going to take? And we took like $1,000. She had 500. I had 500. I spent 150. I spent 160 bucks and she spent 200. Sunday's video? No, I did not, Ronnie. I'll have to look it up. I, have, I thought I had your bell um, rung, but I'll have to double check it. Sometimes I don't get notifications. I, they, they, no, they annoy me when they pop up because when I first log on, it's like ka ding ka ding ka ding ka ding ka ding everything that went off during the day now comes up and I gotta go through like three minutes of notifications from people that have posted stuff eight hours ago, you know. And you play poker. No, um yeah, I don't play poker, I don't gamble, I don't like I don't like giving people my money that don't need it kind of thing. 
gambling is not my thing. Like, my wife likes to gamble. I never did. But I lived in Las Vegas for 10 years and probably went gambling twice while I was there. I live 40 miles from Atlantic City, and I've only been there once or twice in the 20 years I've lived here. There you go. So you know firsthand what it's all about. Yep, it's uh, I just have better things to do with my money than uh, give it away to a guy like not for nothing, but and I'm not going after because he's the president, but like Donald Trump, Steve Wynn, all those big casino owners, they, they don't need any more of my money. I need my money, you know. I need my money to help grow my channel, believe it or not. And it's how it's going to grow. I'm going to have to invest more. Okay. It is. It is. Um, <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. I, I need my money to keep my wife happy. Remember, number one rule, guys. Happy wife, happy life. I know you heard that before. It's kind of true. Keep your wife happy. And you're going to be okay. She's not going to bug you too much. But man, if you, she's not happy, she's going to be ragging on you. Unfortunately, cards, it's turned into that. It's not, it's not a hobby. It's it turned into something else. And they're just using the term hobby instead of gambling or and or stock market. You're right. It's still using the word hobby but it's it's just uh, I don't know it's it's gotten out of hand so and I, I go back to um, the 80s when they over they mass produced uh, cards like in the mid to late 80s early 90s when they mass produced the crap out of them and almost destroyed the hobby a lot of people left the hobby a lot of people quit and just said the hell with it um now they're overcharging they're not mass producing you buy one one box with one card you pay two hundred dollars whatever yeah and that's the whole thing you get lucky with prospects now they build them up so much it's like it's just the hype and everyone buying the hype you know i think you're hurt any minute and that's it you've just spent 300 400 500 dollars on a card and now it's worth the nickel. Eight hundred dollars a box. You know what? I'll get i someday, twenty years from now, I'll get one in a lot, maybe, if I'm still alive. And then I'll look at it and say, Oh, look at that. I finally got one. And some poor guy paid eight hundred dollars for this and I got a box of them for, you know. 20 bucks. So you never know. You never know. Some guys do it and they sell that card right away because they're not in it for the hobby's sake. They're in it for the monetary gain, too. So. <clears throat> All right, guys. Um, I'm 13 minutes past my shutdown time. I believe. Let me check. Check the timer. Oh no, I got I got four more minutes. Sorry. So you have a lot of uh, national treasure boxes, or just a bunch of uh, those blaster boxes. No single cards. Yeah, so here's what you can do, Ronnie, and I would suggest you try this. Um, once you get a little bit bigger, you have all that you have all that stock. Um, you might want to just try having a jabs type live auction set up. Make sure I'm sure you've already got a uh, a PayPal account, and you know more about that probably than I do. 
And so Japs was making crazy mad money off of silly cards. So, you know. People are just, like, going crazy. I don't know. They lost their minds on some of those cards. It was almost like a gambling addiction where they were trying to just outbid. Um, no, you're not going to beat me. I'm going to outbid you. Um, so. I didn't bid on anything. I, I knew that that's not what I wanted to do. I watched for a while, but yeah. I'm not going to spend my money that way. Donald Blumdahl, yes, yes. Unfortunately, Donald, um, he airs his stuff on. Right now, I'm in the middle of my work. I'm in dead smack in the middle of work, so I cannot catch anything of Donald's because he starts, I know he tries to start later and catch East Coast uh, guys, I guess, but he catches us all in the middle of our work day, you know. I don't know. There's better ways. You know, there's other channels that could be supporting, though. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I'm firmly, I mean, I, I like watching this channel, too. You know, uh, and I've got a lot of uh, supporters from him by donating to his channel through Super Chats. And then his subscribers come over and check out my stuff. I actually put out a lot of stuff until we started doing box breaks. He and I were doing auction stuff, and sometimes... A Sunday apart, we would buy, we would pick up something that one of the other of us had the week before. But he does have that honey hole that he goes to that's shutting down on him. That he used to do a kill in there. But he's got that income where from his supporters that he can go drop $300 at, you know, one spot. Another $100 here. I, I got to work for my money. And I know he can't do it on his teacher's salary, so... He's getting it from uh, Patreons and stuff like that. Uh, ad revenue is not that much. Uh, most of it's coming from his Patreons. That's why he's got so many. What do you got? 700 and something Patreons? It's ridiculous. Someone put the number up there. It's like 718 or some crazy, crazy mad number. Yeah, and that's a lot of money. $100. Like, what do you... What do you make an hour, you know? And then break that down. How many hours did you have to work to get that one box of cards? And then did you pull what you hoped to get out of there? A Mike Trout auto. Or whoever your favorite guy is. I mean, Mike Trout, everyone wants, everyone wants a Mike Trout autograph. Just to say they have a Mike Trout. And he's a great ball player. But... Well, Ronnie sells cards, so what are you interested in, basically? Um, he sells blaster boxes. He sells all kinds of stuff. Loose cards, autograph cards, uh, relic cards. Yeah, so what do you collect? Complete sets, individual players, team sets. That's what he's asking. Like me, I collect whatever catches my eye. I don't, I mean, mantle cards, yes. But even mail cards are out of my range right now. I can't go out and, you know, If I buy a mail card, it's a one-time deal. And I did that when I bought that autograph mail and paid 400 bucks for it or something like that. Yeah, I would say go check out check out Ronnie's um, uh, videos. Ronnie sells a lot of stuff, relics, autographs, blaster boxes, all kinds of stuff, new stuff. Uh, just go check them out. Um, I get to see them when I go to the flea market, if I bump into them at this table. Like, Ronnie, stuff like that will sell on auctions. There's people who are like Freddie Freeman. There are people who just collect Braves on in the community. You'd be surprised. Like, I, I was really surprised that, like, like, I never really heard of 
people collecting like one team or one player or you know stuff like that i'm like what the heck because i always collected everything i i collected everything it's like i just it's a set all right let's put it together because that was the goal back in the day is to get that set and complete your sets and hell i used to mark up the checklist and everything you know now i don't because checklists are one of the few cards in the sets that consistently hold their value it's an unmarked checklist especially the older ones good luck finding one of them unmarked so anyway so i just started saying about my wife she's a she's a hardcore um world of warcraft player now i got her hooked i don't know maybe five years ago i used to play it a lot and i got her hooked and she kept she keeps coming in there she's got something she wants to ask me <sighs> you got off while last year yeah prime man still plays it right now they've yeah you got off last year so would you know they went back to like a classic wow they call it it's not vanilla it's vanilla but it's classic well they can't call it vanilla so they call it classic we start out at level one you go all the way back to the very beginning and you don't get your mounts until whatever i did i'm not i don't know what level my guy is i like i've been through that oh you think you're finally done like i'm i'm pretty far away from it too i still have my accounts it's still active but it's not that's why they went back to this classic to let to let the people who never got to experience it get something similar to it they couldn't even they couldn't even go back to the original wow you know why because they deleted all that stuff they deleted up to a certain point so they had to kind of try to piece it all back together all that data was gone they got rid of it they threw it away so they didn't have it they had to kind of build it all up again so it's not the same but it's close yeah this year is what the 15th anniversary for a while but i'm pretty much done i play once in a while but i tried the classic and i'm like you know Man, I've done this. I don't want to keep walking around. I want to mount. I want to fly. I'm going to be lazy like that. And my wife, she's like, oh, yeah, you need to get your you need to get your uh, character so you can get your flying in the new zones. Not for classic, but for the the latest expansions, right? The latest patches. And you got to go through all that crap again to get your reputations up. And... She goes, I already got four of my characters up. I said, well, you're home all day. My wife's uh, disabled, so she doesn't work anymore. And uh, so I said, so you're home all day. You play my character and get him up for me. So I don't have to walk everywhere. But she won't. She, I mean, she won't. She will, but she won't. Yeah. yeah i'm the same way like it's kind of all it's always the same rinse and repeat it's all, all a lot of the same stuff over and over for the last few expansions so yeah they, i think they've run out of ideas they've lost a lot of, of people too anyway sorry to get away from uh baseball and get onto this wild thing sorry prime man does wow though he does that he was streaming that the last couple of days i saw him um my wife does that. Like, I got so many mounts too, but I can't get the achievement for 300 mounts for your one character. Rideable mounts. She's got that. But she sits and she'll grind instances until it drops. I did the pet thing. <clears throat> I did have tons of pets. My first videos, if you go back and check my playlist, you'll see all my pet battles that I posted. Um, a couple of them have a couple hundred views on. I love the pet battles. I like doing them. Yeah, I had a whole whopping, I think, four followers back then. But I'm still pumping out the videos every day. And some of my videos, even though people wouldn't subscribe and follow my, my channel, I would get two and 300 views on a, on a video for a pet battle. But no one would subscribe. So 
so I changed gears, went to other gaming formats, first-person shooters, I like doing them, nothing there, I got my sons to sign up, follow me, some of their friends, we would game together, but no. Nope. So now I played for kind of relaxing thing. Um, uh, the Hunter Call of the Wild. I play that. It's a hunting game, but it's cool. It's the animals can actually kill you. You know, if you're not careful, they'll charge you. Lions will attack you and kill you. I was riding my, I was riding my quad through the, the uh, African savanna. Because you go to different places, you can go to different maps. And I'm just riding my quad across the thing. And next thing I know, wham, I got hit. And knocked off my quad. And there was a lion. A uh, lioness, actually. All right, Ronnie, take it easy. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to log off here too soon. It's already eight minutes past midnight. And I got to get up. And... Um, John's the night shift guy, so. Um, yeah, I get killed by lions and stuff, and water buffaloes charge you and kill you, and buffaloes will charge you and kill you, wild buffaloes. It's cool. There's uh, pumas in the game at different different maps. They try to keep it realistic to your zones. All right, Ron. I don't know if I'm going to make it up there this weekend, Ron. I don't know what my wife has planned for me, to tell you the truth. I hope it's not driving to Virginia, but it might be. She wants to pick up a table from a friend of hers. That plays wow. And they showed her a table that they made, and they do woodworking and stuff, and now she wants to buy this table. Okay. All right. John, Ronnie, catch you later. Who else is in here? Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Tomorrow at 7 p.m., that box on your screen right there is what I'm going to break open. We're going to go through that and see what we can find. Hopefully, we get something nice. Hopefully, they're not bricked up. Um, but... I don't know. This wasn't my box. I didn't control this box. I don't know if I bought it at a flea market or if I got it in the auction I went to. Yeah. But someone else had control over this, not me. So I don't know what it's going to be like inside. I, right. John, take it easy. I'll see you um, next time I see you and whoever else is here. Um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. This is Boom Sign saying if you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, comment. Don't forget to subscribe to all the other people that were here and chat with us tonight. Follow them. Check out their channel. See what they've got to offer. And uh, hashtag, right, we we, uh, we grow together, help each other out, help support each other's channel the best way you can, whether it's just through subscriptions and or thumbs up, likes, whatever. Uh, ring the notification bells um, so we get notified of each other's uh, um, product that we put out. Um, and this is Boomslang signing out saying, Peace, and we'll see you in the next one. All right, later, guys.